two, one, press. Done. Okay. Your event is starting. All right, I think we are live. And it says we are live. On Facebook. Apparently we're live. At least. We are live on the Facebook. Live on... Did we make it to the Instagram? I don't know. I think... I, well, I think YouTube's coming up. I don't think we made it on the Instagram yet, so... Uh oh. Check that. Uh oh. Quick. Already trouble. Trouble. Here we go. Connect us. All right. All right. All right. Do we have a preview? Is it going? Yeah. You're now live. We're live. We're live on Instagram. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. I don't know. I'm, make, I'm making no sure. Video running yet. We're not, not on video, video yet. We're not live on YouTube yet. Not yet. Let's see. Although people saw me. Did they? I got a high Josh. It's just not pulling up on you. For everyone that's coming that on the on? Facebook and and uh, Instagram live stream right now, Maybe. and all of you that don't know Joel, which you should already. You should know me. Because he's a 3D printing nerd, and we're in the nerd garage. We're in my nerd garage. In his nerd garage, which is pretty incredible, but this guy has a massive following in the industry, arguably one of the largest, if not the largest in 3D printing industry. Not right? the largest. One of them, though. But it's... It's getting there. 150 plus thousand people. 128,000. On YouTube. Got a couple and then all the other channels. So audio. huge audience following him. Everything he's doing in 3D printing. Audio is not insane. Go check him out on his YouTube channel. It's at Joel Telling, right? 3D Printing well, Nerd. Uh, YouTube.com slash 3D Printing Nerd. YouTube.com slash 3D Printing nice. Nerd. Follow him on Twitter at Joel Telling. You can follow him on audio. Instagram at Joel Telling. We're just getting everything set up right now. Everything's uh, getting set up. The audio is out of sync a little bit. Uh, we can, I think we can. I just want to make sure I'm going to go get closer and make sure that if anyone's commented that the audio is coming in okay. Someone said, why aren't you at Comic-Con, Joel? I wish I was at Comic-Con. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, usually I'm at Comic-Con. Usually can I'm at Comic-Con. Anyone Comic -Con. confirm the audio is okay? Do we have good uh, let's audio? Let's see. Can you hear me? Can you hear Joel? We, I think the audio, the audio on the devices is going to be fine. It's just yeah. a matter of the audio on the... Okay, Here, wait. Wait, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something. The audio is good. I'm going to try something. I'm getting. Okay, Are that's you getting, good. You're getting audio good? I'm getting audio good on okay. Instagram at so, least. What about now? How about now? Is it in sync? Because there's like a 10 second delay. Oh, so now, yeah. we have to, now we have to be like, okay, is it in sync? Lauren's there. Hey, Lauren. Okay, so everybody let me know if the audio is in sync right now. I switched over to my backup microphone. And we'll see if this is actually working. It's exciting. I want to get it in sync before we... Before we're ready to rock. Right, okay. Uh, it says it is not in sync. We're still we're still working okay. on technical difficulties. Got one here. more. Got one more. Ready, Josh? <laughs> Unplug the microphone cable from the camera. Stand by. Of course. All right, how about now? Is it in sync? We can deal with the loudness. We just need to know if it's in sync. Someone wrote "in sync" bye bye bye. Yeah, bye bye bye. Yeah, it's on the actual. Are you old enough to know that reference? Yes, I do know. Audio is off. Yes. What was my audio? Is terrible. Okay, no, no, it's like five seconds off. Oh. Yeah. It was working before. Is anyone three D printing at the moment? You guys have any questions before we get started here? Okay, here's the clap, right? Here. Hit the clap. Okay, there's the clap. Testing, check, mic. Okay. Just another, just to let you guys know, we are in Joel Telling, the 3D printing nerd himself. Low volume, in okay. In nerd garage, which is I really, yes. really cool. And there's okay, now it's quiet, printers. so okay, let me step aside here. I'm <laughs> almost there. I'm so close. Once I don't have to move all this stuff around. Oh, you guys are going to see fun stuff. All right, here we go. Joel's getting his YouTube live stream set up right now, so. Everything should be rocking and rolling here in a sec. For all of you that haven't seen, this is one of the uh, the R2s right next to uh, me. But I'm delivering okay. personally to Joel himself, the man, the myth, the legend. The man, the myth, the legend. All right, yes. I, I adjusted. I hear, I see a better. Someone says... The box is awesome. <laughs> That's good. This is Audio is a tad early. Okay. Slight delay. 
I feel like we're hosts this of a TV so, show here. It shouldn't be this Behind hard. The I know. I did turn maybe, up the maybe mic. I'll kick back in. Oh, people, okay. Better a little. Sorry about headphone users. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. We're here. We're good. Okay. Much better. We're live. Everybody can hear. We are live okay. everywhere. We're we live go. on Facebook, Robo's Facebook, Robo's Instagram, 3D Printing, there's YouTube. Okay. We're everywhere, and we have Red Bulls. We do have Red Bulls. This isn't sponsored by Red Bull. No, 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 no but I just, I Red Bull. Red we just Bull. like Red Bull. No, I, I, have a, I have a Red Bull in the evenings. <laughs> so we're having a Red Bull right now at 7 o'clock p.m. Cheers, Braden. Cheers. So let's get, um, let's get into it here. Mm. All right. So I will, um, let me say a little something. So for everybody yes. watching on YouTube, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. Spread the word. Share the link. Let others be in on the fun. I hope it's fun. Yes. I hope it's fun. Because we're going to unbox this in, in a moment. In a moment. Everybody on Instagram. What, and what else do we got? We have Instagram right over here. Okay. The live feed. Hey, Instagram. And then we have the Facebook. And Facebook. Live feed. Oh, man. So we've got we've yes. got my YouTube channel live. We've got the Robo Instagram feed live. And we got the Robo Facebook page live. Yes. We are triple threats. We are all live right now. And it's awesome. I'm excited. It's crazy. I feel it like is. a host of a TV show or on like the, the news the, right now. It's all right. Well, you got, the, like you got the bright lights. <laughs> all right. So should we dive into it? The, the first thing, well, mm. so we can dive into the 3D printing, but the first thing, you know, I want my audience to hear just initially is, and I know your audience already probably knows this because they watch Maybe, everything about you, know. but uh, we'll find out. basically just a small background about who you are and how you got into 3D printing and why you have a YouTube channel oh, about 3D okay. printing. Okay. If this just is remedial quick, for quick anybody. bio synopsis. If this is remedial, is. then they'll just hear it again yes. because that's okay. I love it. I've been uh, I've been a nerd all my life, and I've I've enjoyed nerdy, geeky things. Uh, I like to take things apart, put them back together. Yes. I used to uh, take all of the tape in the house and create these giant cardboard GI Joe forts with trap doors and, you have and secret of these? things. I need to see these. Maybe we need I to post these on, on the stream. I think after. they'd be great. <laughs> uh, so what I a couple years ago. My wife and kids bought me a 3D printer for Christmas because Amazon had it on sale. It was the okay. Flash Forge Creator Pro, nice. and it dropped below a thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, it was you know heated bed, dual extruder. It was the Flash Forge Creator Pro, machine, so yeah. uh, so they bought it for me. It opened up on Christmas, and I was like, yay! I so think I, I talked to you shortly after that. We've spoken so. since the because I remember when you got that machine. We had spoken not too long after that. That was the first machine you got. We spoke, I think if we go back to emails, we spoke when I had a couple thousand subscribers. Yes. And now he's up to what, 123,000? 128,000. 128,000 I saw today. Yeah. So and what, what, seeing this guy grow from, you know, a small YouTube channel to now a massive YouTube channel for this industry. Well, it was never anything I went for. I, I got that 3D printer and I thought, the first thing I thought is what most people think when they get a 3D printer is, hey, how can I use this to make money? Yep. So I opened an Etsy store, and I designed custom cookie cutters. Okay. And I, I made it. I made thousands of dollars yeah. selling custom cookie cutters printed on my FlashForge. And that was Pro. your aha moment. Well, at one point, I wanted to show someone how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I recorded a video for YouTube, mm -hmm. and people seemed to be receptive yeah, of it. Yeah. So I record another one where I used OpenSCAD to create a GoPro handle, okay. like a rig for yeah, it. Because yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a software engineer by trade. I know okay. automation. OpenSCAD is just like JavaScript. I was like, I can do this. Uh, just so, Yeah, just so you guys know that, this is his side gig, by the way. He's a software engineer by day and a 3D printing nerd. By night. It's, it's even hard. So. It's hardly even my side gig, and the reason why <laughs> it's so amazing where I'm at is because uh, I have a day job, I have a wife, I have three kids, and once all of the needs of all of that is satisfied, you know. then I can begin my 3D printing stuff. Then you come out in this garage and magic. Come happens. on the garage, or I go up in my office, yeah. or. Or yeah, that's why that's why a printer review can take so long with yeah, me because yeah. if if I have the printer for two weeks, I may only get like an hour with it. Because yeah. <laughs> kids, kids uh, coming in now. Well, the kids have fun. Yeah. They've been on my streams. They have a good time. Are the kids printing stuff right now? They want to. They they know how. Okay. In that they know it needs filament. They yes. know it needs to warm up. They yep. know they know to go to Thingiverse or my mini factory. To look up stuff. They know oh. that it needs to be brought into a program. They yep. they know about supports. Yep. They know all of that kind of stuff, but because they're around it so much, their their knowledge of it is almost transparent yeah, to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Whereas they have kids at school who not only may not have <laughs> used a may not have used a three D printer before. 
their friends may not even have seen one yeah. or know what one is. Yeah. And so it's, I, I always have to try to remember that because we're on, it, it's, it's cutting edge yeah. it's, and it's freaking cool. Yeah. It is so cool. But at the same time, it, we, we have to make it, I want to make sure my kids know that, that this, that this knowledge that they're absorbing without even realizing it is going to come in handy someday. No question. And once they get into a STEM program later on in junior high or high school. That's where everything's going. They're going to be yeah. way ahead of the yeah, curve. Exactly. And it's, it's going to be fantastic. They have already a wealth of 3D printing knowledge behind them, which is cool. So, so then, uh, ready to rock. uh, at one point, so my YouTube channel, I, I mean, I was, it was growing a little bit, mm -hmm. it was growing a little bit. And at one point, I produced a video where I assembled the Hawk Moon. It's a yeah. gun from the video yep. game yep. Destiny. Yeah, I've seen it in your opening video. Yeah. You hold it up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and that video was my first viral hit. It got okay. posted to a Destiny group somewhere. Nice. And it amassed a couple hundred thousand views. Okay. It jumped my subscribers up. And then it just, I sort of followed this little this little hill climb. I love it. Yeah. And it just started going from there. It just started going. I mean, everything everything is cyclical. Everything has, has its bumps yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. but. It's just, it's it's amazing that, like, you, you're the president of Robo, yeah. right? You brought an R2 here, and we're talking in my garage. Yeah. And this is just something I do when the kids are asleep. Yeah, and for all, for, <laughs> for your channel that don't know who I am, um, my name's Brayden, I'm one of the founders of Robo, and we started this literally on a dining room table in San Diego, um, right out of college. And I had used, I had hired someone to make me 3D printed prototypes for a previous company, and it cost me about $8,000 to get these prototypes. And when I found out and got interested in what 3D printing actually was, it just kind of, it, it all clicked. Is that, it clicked. It all You're clicked. like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, my business partner, Kobe, was making a prosthetic leg using a 3D printer for his senior design project in mechanical engineering. Ah. And it turned into us actually building our first machine, which was the R1, which we launched on Kickstarter. And okay. luckily, uh, you know, we're able to pre get a thousand eleven hundred people into that product early on so we're a couple of guys on a dining room table with eleven hundred well what's here's what's great about your story your your first use of kickstarter was a, a seed funding round yes. right you yeah. you could not have done what you did without that insertion of cash from kickstarter you needed that to create something and it was a huge just boost of confidence that we we're in the right direction i mean when you get on there, you launch this project, you have hopes and dreams of what it could become. But, you know, as you see, it could it could be it could go either which way. And when it started like becoming successful for us, we're like, wow, we're on to something. At what first point did it like become successful? Or what at what point were were you were you like, whoa, this is it? Was there was there a certain point in the Kickstarter or was it when you got your first prototype or yeah what was the what was your not not necessarily the aha moment but the moment where you're like oh my god and it clicked and you're like you dug in and that was yeah that. i would say um the moment that it sort of became real for us is we had a goal of forty nine thousand dollars to raise to get us into well, your like, first kickstarter first stage yeah okay. and we hit that in 24 hours <laughs> so for us and we had a 35 day campaign <laughs> So for us, oh my when, that, when that happened, we're like, okay, like we're going to have to make a lot of these machines potentially and reality set in real quick, but it was such an exciting time for us. I mean, it was three of us on a dining room table in San Diego with our first prototype and you know, now we're four and a half years down the road, actually almost five years down the road. How many employees uh, do you have now? Introducing our new product, 32, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So wow. good sized company. We got... You know, we got an amazing engineering team. I love these guys to death. So we have a small engineering team, but they're kicking butt. So, you know, we appreciate them a ton. And, we, you know, we have a great marketing team. We have a great sales team. I mean, just, I have an awesome team. I love everyone on my team, so. Part, well, part of success is surrounding yourself with people that are smarter than yeah, you, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Honestly, <laughs> like, I've learned so much from the guys, are, you know, that are around us, especially on the engineering side, on the sales side, I mean, the branding side, I mean, you know the new branding. I know we've gone through a whole shift in our branding um, from our original R1 machine, and it's just it's been exciting. It's been a great learning experience, and you know we're excited to launch these new products. So we'll get we'll get it out of the box. Soon. Should we should we get into this? Really? You want to do it? Yeah. Yeah. I can just start popping it open while we're talking. It's up to you. And just going through it? after it. Yeah. Okay. And while I'm doing this, I don't know if you want to talk about like I don't know some of the things that you've 3D printed or 
I don't know. I'm not, I want to. I want to be. A, I want to see this box open. I All right, so I'm gonna. Your, I'm gonna, gonna kind of talk somewhere. this through. Well, actually, before I do this, Brayden's really tall, you guys. Brayden is six foot four. I have to give Joel. I'm six one. The honorary Robo T here. Oh, there so. We go. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna hook him up with that. But just so you guys know, this is uh, the packaging that we got here. I uh, spent a lot of time designing this, making it look really nice for everyone. Lots of good instructions, features, everything like that. Uh, it has these little clips on it, which are basically similar to that which you see on TVs. Okay. So it just allows you to have a, there's a handle at the top here. So Similar to what we see on TV. Yeah, when you're pulling TVs you out, you pull those out and then you oh. lift the top box out. Okay. So you can get to the TV without dumping the whole thing over. <laughs> I so, see. Yeah. Okay. These are TV clips, you guys. So we designed, yeah, we have these clips in here. There's a handle at the top, which lets you carry it, and there's handles on the side, which just makes it really nice. And then what we did was you literally just hold this handle, you open it up, and it just sort of reveals oh, itself. It blooms oh. nice. It blooms like a flower. Yeah, it blooms like a little flower here. So oh. that's kind of a cool experience because obviously you get up close and personal with it right as you open it. You don't have to, uh, you know, start taking a bunch of stuff apart. You're kind of just ready to rock as you open the box. Let me so at this it. point, tell me about this design. How did you how did you come to a design that was that was like a not an egg shape, but it's yeah. almost like a center bulge. It's uh, yeah, what, so what made you get away from 90 degree angles and sci-fi curves? Yeah, stuff? we've been through, uh, I would say probably five different iterations. I'm talking full scale prototype iterations okay. of the R2. And you know, we worked with an amazing company to help kind of come up with the shape and design, but we took it a lot off of you know other smart electronics. We had a lot of inspiration. We all sat in a room and just went through all the brands that we admire, all the products we admire, and we designed it based off that. Okay. So that's how we got to this final design. We had probably 10 we were working with, and this is the one we ended up all being like, this is the one. Wow. It just kind of all hit us, and we're like, we like this design. Is there, is there a design you had that you didn't use that you're like, oh, maybe we should have tried it? Uh, well, our first one, I just wish we tried it just because it was two years before this one actually came out. So oh, wow. from a timing perspective, it would have been nice to pursue that one, but I know this is the right machine. Um, this is the right one to bring to the public. That one, you know, looking back on it, would have had foreseeable issues with some of the oh, really? design elements okay. of it. So we designed this to be compact, not waste space. You know, with the 8x8x10 eight eight by by build volume, we didn't want to make the machine this big to accomplish that build volume. So we tried to make it, keep it as compact as possible. So what, when you were designing this, as far as the build volume yeah. goes, what what were your comparisons? What what machines did you look at and you were like, I like this build volume, it needs to be similar to it. Are we talking like Ultimakers? Yeah, are we course, looking at other yeah. I3s? Yeah, or? We're looking at you know, all the players in the industry that you know have big followings. What what are people printing? Uh, that's one thing we looked at and talked to a, di a bunch of different people. Went around shows and looked at what people were making, the size of objects. Okay. And for the most part, everything fell within the frameworks of this build platform. So if you look at even all the objects on Thingiverse, a lot of them are relatively within the frameworks okay. of this build. Well, plus the people that so. make uh, cosplay weapons, they usually yep. do them in parts. Yep. So then all the parts could fit within yeah. this build platform. Mm -hmm. So it's still got a good size. It's an inch smaller than our R1 Plus. In which direction? Uh, in the actual, the Y. So it has an eight by eight by 10, that one's eight by nine by 10. Oh, okay. So one inch smaller, but so we have a, uh, here. There's a box knife right there. Basically, you, have one. I mean, you got some here. snips. There we go. So literally, you just snip this bad boy off. Once you snip that off, this door will open. Okay. So this gives you access into the actual machine here. And we have this really cool little box that we designed. There we go. So this box right here is our... Everything inside here. Our power cord, our tool kit. So you Art. said you, you designed this box. I we mean, designed this box. I mean, box. Brayden, it's, it's a box. So. I know, I know. We spent a lot of time designing this box. We wanted it to be nice. Okay. <laughs> so we got our getting started guide in here. We have, you know, it comes with a free year of Autodesk Fusion 360, all that kind of stuff. So okay. all this is inside. You basically pull this off. You have your power supply. You have your filament. Oh, cord okay. Here. Is it? It's direct drive, right? It is direct drive, yes. Okay. And then the second extruder that we're will be a Bowden. Oh, well, okay. yes. So we'll have one direct drive, one boat in. And then we have a little bit of the starter filament ready. So everything you need right inside this box. It's very Robo Blue. It's very Robo Blue. It's very Branded. Robo Blue. Branded Robo Blue. We just made that. But, uh, so you get that. There we go. This, you're kind of ready to uh, just kind of load on the back here. Oh, here, wait, let's turn it around so they can see. Oh, yeah. Let me, wait, let's, should we get this out? Yep. Let's get this out. Let's get it in front here so everyone can see it. All right, 
we're up close and personal now. Well, we're we good. Some, Everybody we can see it. So one of the things, though, Braden, you got to remember, yes. if this works perfectly, some people may say you cherry picked a machine. This one is one that we we took directly from uh, the batch here. I made sure it wasn't broken when I got here. Okay. Because <laughs> TSA always likes to go through my uh, stuff when I'm flying with okay. printers. Uh, but yeah, this is ready to rock right out of the box. So this thing, we have some foam in here, obviously, just to make sure that the, that the packaging is all good when you're shipping it. Are you proud of this foam? I'm very proud of that foam. It took a lot of time to And that's just, that is that foam. just some grease from the rust? Just some grease, yeah. Okay. We make sure it's nice and greased up for you. That's what she said. Once you, <laughs> once you get all this out, this is just internal packaging stuff. So okay. We got some tape here you just pull off. So it's just, oh, just standard, easy to release yep. kind of tape to hold stuff on. This is just to hold everything on. Okay. Super, super. This is just to make sure that everything in the shipping. The back here. You know, we did a lot of, a lot of different shipping tests when we were at the factory. And uh, you know, what's a shipping test? So we actually, there's actually a machine for all of you that don't know this. They actually, when you do shipping tests, it literally picks your printer up or your object up, whatever your thing is. We were there with HP was doing tests. Get lower. You're really and, tall. And it just, <laughs> it picks it up and it drops it from certain angles over and over again. And then it does vibration tests. There's a big machine that does all these different vibrations. So we had to survive all these different tests. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen a few of the machines, you know, get damaged still in the shipping process. Sure. Um, so we've added additional things to the actual uh, printer in terms of the packaging. So but if you, that okay, isn't an issue. You take your baby, it's yep. in a box, it's yep. all packed up, ready to go. I mean, are you like biting your nails while it, this, this thing is shaking it and dropping it? Oh yeah, it's super scary. But at the same time, it's like we know we have to survive this in order to send this product to anyone. And that's just the nature of the game here. So we, we had to do that with the uh, initial machine and we're doing it with this one as well. So one of the things, I do need to tell you though, uh, two of the people I know yes. did get damaged R2. Yes, yes. And I'm hoping that, uh, that, but those were the only two I heard of. So have you honestly heard, yep. is, is, there, is there a symptom or is there, or is there some outliers? There's some outliers. So we, okay. we've actually been in touch with our carrier mm -hmm. and we've made them aware of all this. We've sent all the past drop shipping tests that we've already done because they're all to the carrier standards. And so they are well aware of it. They're putting us into a system that hopefully gets us better care on the product. Which carrier are you using? Uh, UPS. Okay. Yeah. So for all our domestic shipping. So this right here, I'll just. Oh, peel it off nice and slow. Ooh, yeah. that's so ASMR. Just, just nice and fresh. You can I take sure it off over here? Got to make sure it's ready. Yeah, you can take it off all the sides. You know, make oh, sure none of this gets wonderful. scratched. We got one on the screen here, so that's ready to go, all nice and purty. And then we have these little clips right here. Okay. You just, you just there is a tape end down here. Does underneath? Does it need there to? There might come be. Off? There might be one or two. I didn't look under it down there. But we can take those off at the yep. end. You can take those off. Yep. You can take them off right now. Oh. Okay. So right these on. need to be snipped, right? What's that? Yes. Those need to be snipped or. They literally can just, you can just push them off like that. Oh. So they all, there's, the, there's little, there's lots of clips and zip ties and things like that just to make sure that everything's intact. Well, I got, uh, then you got to get off and just little small zip ties like this. My strips. You know where I put them? Um, I have, yeah, I have mine. Right right here. Here. You got so yours. They're on, they're on right that there. cart. They are on that cart. We'll get all these off. See, I found them just Ready in time. Rock. Just in time. Oh, there's one more of these. Yeah, one more of those. Pop that off. Okay. We'll get this little tape off. Here, one of the things I want to show you too. We'll make sure we show the camera there. Which is really cool. Is this is a pre-sanded PEI sheet. So if all of you are familiar with- Pre-sanded, what do you mean by pre-sanded? So PEI, one of the great things about it for all of you that, I mean, I'm sure many of the 3D printing enthusiasts know about PEI, but what's great is over time, if it starts to lose some of its adhesive qualities, mm -hmm. you can sand it, mm -hmm. and it basically yeah, brings it back to life. Yeah, it a bit. Yeah, so we pre-sand it just so it's really ready to go and rock okay. solid when you actually get it. Is there any more tape down here? I think we're good. So down here, there's one, two, there's six pins. So the the 
Bed is heated, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So removable heated platform. So those are. And mag do magnets hold it in place? Yes. Okay, so the magnets hold it in place and it pushes down the pins. Those pins make the connection to the bed to yes. heat so it. Yes, this just sets right on it, just like that, and you're ready to go. Okay. This goes, obviously, right here. Oh. And that's plugged in. Wow. That's the machine right there. So that wasn't too difficult. It looks I, uh, not too difficult. I, I'm guessing uh, the box that you're proud of also has instruction manuals that you're proud of. It has a quick start guide. We have a full <laughs> getting started video on our YouTube channel that walks you through how to use it. I forgot the final finishing touch though, which is sort of our little way of just getting the, the customer before they start using it to get involved. What is, I'll show the camera so they can okay, see. I'll show it. you guys. This is just a this is just the cover plate for the extruder here. Show the, wait, show the other, my camera too. There you go. So this, this, we is, have right, three this is right here. in the toolkit. You turn this on and you just pop that in right there and that's the oh. finishing touch. Now it's ready to go. So this has a magnetic door right here. Okay. Oh, it has I the see. full color touch screen. It has obviously the eight by eight by 10 build volume with the PEI sheet. Um, direct drive extruder lets you use any of the filaments. So pop that down. This okay. will be for when we add our dual extrusion, so. Which way are you going? That way? Turn it this way. Okay, so there's, these are the spool holders right yeah, back so here. These, these pop down and you put any of the, you know, different spools that are out in the marketplace, any of the uh, open source materials, and you can start printing with it directly from there. Once we have the dual extruder, which will be coming in the future here, uh, we'll be giving you updates on that, you can add them right there. So the, nope. dual, so the dual extruder, now that you're talking about this, is that an in-place upgrade on this, the R2? Yes, there's going to be an in-place upgrade for the R2. So we have the slot here for it, right here for the Bowden tube. We have the slot right down here that you okay. put the second extruder in, and uh, you'll, be, you'll be ready to rock. Oh, so, okay, so a direct drive on, on this extruder. The yes. second extruder will be a Bowden. Bowden extruder system. Okay. Yeah, that's what this is right here, so. Oh, I see. Is there a timeline on that? There, we don't have an exact timeline, but we're close. We are very close, so we're going to be giving updates on that really soon here. Okay. Close in manufacturing we have, we terms. It could be six months. Yeah. You know, everything, you know. Before, we're, you're going to try printing. before Christmas, It's right? printing, so. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. We have that part of it. Um, so it's just, it's getting it into production, and for all of you that know about product building, that sometimes is a lengthy process, but it, we're rocking and rolling on it on a daily basis so this thing in the back so see in the back we've got oh so it has uh it has wi-fi connectivity it has wi-fi connectivity it's got, a, it's got an ethernet port yep and so you can power it over the wi-fi it has it emits its own hotspot so it has raspberry pi built into it so okay. it basically acts as a computer um we obviously have the touch screen so you it has onboard slicing which is really cool so you can take an stl file on a thumb drive if it's just a standard stl file you find online you plug it in you go through three or four settings and you're you can press print It'll do all the slicing actually on the machine itself. Because of the Raspberry Pi? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it has the capabilities of being able to do that, which is I mean, a you're really not, cool you're feature not... if you want to quick print stuff. Okay, like this, is a, this isn't to slice complex geometries. This isn't to slice the models that people pull from video games. This is like if someone wants a low poly Pikachu, yes. they put it on a thumb drive and they print themselves yeah. a low poly if Pikachu. If you find something on Thingiverse that's more like a simplistic one yeah. or you know it's set up in the proper fashion to 3d print is it a file size limit or a polygon count limit uh, i believe I, I actually don't know if it's a file size limit i'd have to okay. find out yeah the exact limitations on that but so that's a, people are liking that feature just because they you know oh, it's, a, no, the, it's a great feature the what i like about that feature is that you have a printer where it'll take g-code yes sliced in any slicer and it'll it'll work like a standard printer yep, but you also them. have that added ability yes. what i don't like is when people have that ability and they take away yes. something like they close the loop or they close the filament or something so the fact that that's an added bonus rather than a replacement that's that's we have we have all so we have the app you know built off the octo print we have the cloud base uh three ability to 3d print which is based off the octo print so okay. you have like multiple app or we have the desktop cura version of the software which many people are familiar with so you have oh you have a rebel version of yes. cura oh okay so we have multiple avenues that you can use to actually 3d print or you can just save it onto a thumb drive and plug it in okay so pretty much every which way which you're used to 3d printing you can do on this machine which is cool should i plug this bad boy in uh yeah we've got an outlet right over there i'm gonna bring it to the front here there should be one right there And you can just plug this It's going. In. There we go. It's going. It's on. It's got some nice the little fans on. 
and her fans. A, that's the extruder fan right here in the back. So this though, I never got to see this. This is to cover the, it's, this is just a metal piece. This is an extruder plate, so what? So someone could, an ingenious person could yes. technically Please. laser cut some cool metal customizable plates, right? Oh yeah, that'd be really cool. I hope, I have, I'm surprised actually the fact that you said that, I haven't seen people do that, so. Oh, well I've got some, a pyro design. <laughs> some people out Elvin, there. And maybe with two yeah. people with, with access to this kind of thing, I think. Uh, what, I think they may do that. What I really like about this is because it just gives you quick access to the nozzle. If there's ever you know anything over time that you need to get access to it, it has this one screw here. It'll fall out. There's two plugs, and you can change it out. Okay, so yeah. it, are, is that a product feature? Do you have? Is, is it an E3D V6? Is it a, uh, it's, a V6 no, light? Is it a no? It's a or? hex hot end. So okay, but we want to give people the ability to add the additional hot ends that are out sure. there and just get, really give them quick access to that. So so if someone wanted to swap in an E3D V6, it's entirely possible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Nozzle of 0.4. 0.4 nozzle. Okay. Yeah. 1.75 millimeter filament. So. Um, really good machine, honestly. This touchscreen gives you. I, well, I would you know, hope you'd say it's a really good machine. Most people can't. <laughs> We've been working on these things for two and a half years uh, for everyone that's watching. So it, it's really exciting to actually see them. You know, it, it means a lot to actually see them hit the market and uh, see a lot of people using them and having success with them. Um, if anyone had any of those, you know, minor issues in the shipping stuff, we're taking care of those. So um, you know, we'll get that out. That's to you, you, Chelsea. And, and we're constantly, yeah, we're constantly improving everything, right? So the machine itself is is a beast and it's working great and people are having incredible prints with it. So well, I think I'm just, just really I, excited. I haven't had the chance to use it obviously yeah. yet because this is my first time seeing it in person. But what I what I like about this is it's not just a rehash of your R1 and yes. your R1 Plus. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a different it's I mean it's a different direction in all directions. Yeah, we took a lot. <laughs> that's a good a good way of putting it. We took a lot of the element everything we learned from the R1 Plus and the machine itself. And uh, you know we put that knowledge into this product, and we're super proud of it. I mean, we spent a lot of time and energy on it. it. Has automatic leveling okay. on it. So right here, there's a touch screen. What's cool is when you get started, you can go into the utility side of it. There's a wizard, and it does a. You're a wizard, Harry. It does a Z offset wizard. It has a Z offset and has a fine tune offset wizard. So you can actually it's really really fine tune it. Okay. But if you click the Z offset wizard, it'll start preparing the print all the home it. It'll go down to the point. You do, it walks you through in the getting started guide. You basically just bring it up to a certain point. Once you get up to that point, it'll basically be ready to go. So then is it, is it a paper test? It's a, so we have, we have a, actually, but yes. It's pretty much a paper, but we have this. Did you brand your, some paper? It's the offset tool, yes. Okay. It gives you directions on the back. The reason why we did that is because it has directions on how to do it, how to do these Z offset. So it just makes it easier for everyone when they're actually okay. doing it. But yes, I know it's a little darky. We have a piece of paper that we branded with our logo on it. But here's the instructions, so. And for you users, you guys can check it out. So yeah, it'll come up, it'll do its uh, leveling process. You'll stick this under there. We'll go through a few steps. Once it actually grabs this and gives you a little bit of resistance, you press done and uh, it's, it's ready to print from that point. So definitely exciting. I just want to make sure. Load some material up in this bad boy. I'm gonna get some material in there. Okay, cool. We're loading some material up. I don't like small spools. I know the the standard one that it comes with is a little bit smaller. A little small. <laughs> it's okay. But uh, yeah, we've been selling. You know, we just launched the 500 gram spools just so people can try a bunch of different colors and mm -hmm. things like that. But that one, I believe, is a 300 gram. So can you say who makes your filament? Uh, we. It's not our supplier. We buy from a supplier overseas. I'm not sure if they're even well known oh, okay. in the industry. Yeah. So it literally, you press this button. There's a button right here for all of you that can see. Right on the extruder, you just press this down, and you basically just. Shove Is that it. that disengages the hob bolt? Then. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It just it's there's a little lever mechanism right here, so it just brings back the uh, the gear there, and then it'll allow you to put the material down. So now this will tell me. Places the offset tool, which is this thing, between the print bed and the extruder nozzle until you basically get a little bit of resistance. Okay. So I'll bring it up. I'm just pressing the Z up. Once I feel that resistance. Well, this is a, what you're doing here, this is a very, this is similar to the, the Ultimaker version of bed leveling. Yes. So I got, I have a little bit of the resistance right there, so I'll press done. It'll give me my Z offset. I can save it. 
and then I'm pretty much ready to print it. So how does it how does it level up? Wait, how does it? So we have a we have an IR sensor right here. Oh, okay. So you're 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 setting your nozzle height at yes. that point, yep. and then it's going to say, okay, that's the uh, against that sensor, that's yes. that impedance or whatever that I need to measure across the rest of the bed. So it'll count, yeah, for Got that it. direction. Okay. So. So you're not you're not getting bed level at that point. You're just trying to define your nozzle height. Yes. Okay. Just to define the nozzle height. Cool. So now now that we define that, now we're pretty much ready. We have files already preloaded onto the actual machine it, itself here. So we can go through and we can print any of these files or What's how much memory is on board? Is it like a 32 gig card in the Cuz if you're if, are you running a Raspberry Pi? Yeah, there's quite a bit of memory on it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and it comes with, you got this little bad boy too that it comes with. Oh, okay. Of course, another Robo Brandon sure. thing. So it comes with this as well, so you can save a bunch of files on this. Show my camera. Yes. <laughs> we have so many cameras. Yes, right there. So I can just basically say I want to print, I don't know. Well, wait, 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 we didn't load the filament yet. We, we pushed it in, but do we need to heat it up and verify the extrudes? So yeah, if you're if you're actually following through the actual get it start getting started video, it will walk you through a filament loading showing. wizard. Okay. So it'll tell you, it'll walk you through on the screen, and this is what you do, the nozzle's heating up, feed the material down, once you see it there, press okay. Okay. Um, so we'll do all that step for you. What's cool too is back here, Right in this slot right here, we have a filament detection sensor. Oh, really? So if it runs out of material, it'll actually stop your print. It'll tell you on the thing that, hey, you need to change your filament, put a new roll on, press resume, and you're up and going again. So, cool. So a lot of these. Is it easy? So it, it it'll back out whatever's there. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah, the filament wizard. There's there's quite a few of like the different wizards on here. Um, we have the filament loading wizard, we have a filament changing wizard, um, a slicing wizard. So if you are doing the onboard slicing and you have an STL file on a thumb drive. It's a lot of wizards. You plug right. it in, you slice it. It's a lot of wizards. Lots of wizards. Lots of wizards. Pretty much everything you need to get going. That's what we're trying to do here. And then we have a Z offset one. So if I go to, so now we've already loaded the material back here, fed it through the tube, press this button down, load it into the actual machine itself. Oh, so it's it's down in the throat. It hasn't entered the nozzle because yes. the nozzle hasn't heated up. Correct. Okay. So yeah, I just I just kind of set it down in there. If you're doing it through the getting started, like I said, it will say go to the filament wizard and well, follow let's do the that. steps. So, I mean, people want to see the good stuff, you know? Yes. So filament, filament load. Filament load. So use the wizard to load new filament into. I'll take this back out. Okay. So I'll press Robo PLA. That's what we're using. You select, so it'll ask you, do you want to use Robo PLA, Robo ABS? I select a Robo PLA. It, it's heating up the nozzle right now, so it'll, once it heats up the nozzle, it'll go to the next step. It'll load the material in, and it'll keep going through. It'll walk okay. through all those steps. So. Good. Yeah. How long does it take to heat up the nozzle? Uh, it takes, I would say, probably about two minutes. A minute and a half, two minutes. Not too bad. Uh, not too bad. Okay. How yeah. hot will it We're at, the we're bed at will almost go, 60 degrees Celsius right now. So it's the bed will go ABS hot. It'll do one time? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. It'll go up. Yep. And then this nozzle, you know, you can print with pretty much everything under the sun except the corrosive materials, which we're working on potentially getting like an upgradable. Well, you said it's a, it's a hexagon? Yes. Okay, so they so make. It's got the brass tip, but they do make the stainless steel nozzle for yeah. the hexagon, so you can upgrade to that and it'll give you, uh, you know, obviously less corrosion on it. When you're using the different materials like the stainless steel, the carbon fiber, or things like that. Well, so, yeah. carbon fiber will rip that thing to shreds. Yeah, yeah. So the carbon, yeah, there's quite a few materials out there that are pretty, um, you know, corrosive to the actual nozzle themselves, but obviously the good thing is if you get one of the upgraded ones, that's awesome, but also, you know, being able to quick change those out. I didn't know, because really well, I, I did a video on this a while back, yeah. and uh, strontium aluminate, which is in the glow-in-the-dark filaments, yep. is actually a hard, sharp, and big uh, particle yep. which tears through nozzles. Yep. I didn't yep. know that until yep. I did the research, and so if you go to uh, websites that sell glow-in-the-dark, they will put, we recommend a... Uh, a hard and steel nozzle, nozzle yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a cool, I mean, all right, so we're uh, clip the end of the filament and load the clean filament tip through the extruder. I'll so do it, I'll do it. You can go ahead and just load it in there, so the press button. that down. Okay. There you go, start feeding it through. So we're feeding it filament tip through the extruder. Okay. You probably have it down it's, enough. It's in pretty good. Yep. It's through so the, through so I'll the click next. It says prex next when you see filament extruding out of the nozzle. So it's starting to extrude out, which you can see in here. Look at that. So press next. Wizard complete. So filament loading. So I see done. a little bit of uh, yellow 
Is there a test procedure? There's a test procedure before it even leaves the factory. So okay. they're using filament and maybe do an imprint test before it actually leaves. So, okay. Um, sometimes they're using a different material. Sometimes they're using clear. It just depends. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you might have a little bit of plastic, but that's just to ensure that it actually printed a legitimate piece that makes sense. before it left the factory and it's done on a different print bed. So time yeah. to start a print. So now if we go so to files. What kind of files you got in there? I got, I got all the good stuff. Lawn gnome, money clip. Phone stand. I have a birdhouse. Jeez. Oh, that's all of them. Is uh, there any information besides the file name that you get on the screen? So you get all of the basically progress of the print, but you don't get any of the other fill or other information. No, no, no. Meaning, actual meaning, does it like give you like a time? Yes. An estimated time. Yeah. So we'll give you all okay. of that information on that. So once I start this, so if I do, I'll do uh, do something quick. Okay. If I do a phone stand, for example. And I start this. Well, it'll give me all the information. And then right down at the bottom here, it'll give me all the progress. It'll give me the extruder temperature. It'll give me the bed temperature. Okay, standard um, stuff. Yeah, everything. And then I can close this. So it's uh, this is a little magnetic door here. So it just lets you close it. If you're having it in like a school or anything like that, it obviously keeps the hands out of the actual machine. So for ABS, ABS likes an enclosed environment. Do you have a top for this? Or we like are we are working on something like that. Yes. Okay. So to keep it enclosed. I know that's something that people have been asking. One of the things with our R1 Plus uh, is we were able to print ABS. You got the, mm -hmm. you the heat bed, but we noticed, you know, as the movement, it created a draft effect. And well, I know so, the, um, uh, my buddy Matt printed solid. He had, I think, R1 Plus yeah. enclosures. Yeah. So it actually, so, it took into account the sliding bed and you had this giant plastic thing. So we have amazing customers that build all sorts of cool upgrades and attachments and sell them. Um, so that's a lot of fun, you know, being able to see all that kind of stuff come out. So now it's doing its leveling process based on that nozzle height point that we actually set. Here, I can, uh, I will go and I will move the camera so that they can, maybe they can see this. Yeah, here, I'll, uh, I'll get our Instagram followers here. If you're on Facebook and you want to see this up close and personal, go ahead and get on Instagram. You can check this out. So it's doing just this little leveling. It's got the sensor that's detecting the bed at each point. So it does this, now that you've set that point, it will do this before every single print. So it's gonna keep, it's gonna keep doing the same process, which, you know, it does take about a minute to actually go through the steps, but. Sure. Well, I think it that's just ensures something that, that everything's people are willing to do. I think if, if a printer takes a minute to start a print yep. and it guarantees 99 out of 100 prints are going to be or are going to have a good first level, yep, yep. then I don't think I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, I agree. So that's a, that's sort of yeah same kind of thought process that we had. How many people do we have on the stream right now? We are looking at. We've had people hop on and off on both phones. Three seventy seven. Wow. Oh, love Average, it. Uh, peak was 382. Any questions to answer at the moment? Uh, so big question that's been popping through has been about price and then yes. filament. What filament is in it right now and what kinds of filament can it print? Yes. So the price so, on this... Oh, is, before we go, so let's talk about this. So is it doing a wipe procedure? So it's not doing a wipe. It's just making sure that the filament itself is extruding so it does a set line ah, okay. before it actually gets into the print itself. So that's what you're kind of seeing right here. Now, it, once it's done this, it will go up and it will start the next print. Okay. Just in case you have material in it from before and you want to make sure that that gets out before you actually get into your print itself. But the price on it is $1,499. Um, that comes with you know, all the features, obviously, of the machine itself. Uh, it comes with a free year of Autodesk Fusion 360. It comes with the Robo app. That's a free download, so you can do 3D printing from the app. We have cloud libraries connected. Which is really cool so you can actually go on there connect your google drive your dropbox and you can load files into there and then you can access them directly from the app and print them directly to your machine how does it handle flexibles uh, so we have a flexible we're actually coming out with there's quite a few different manufacturers making flexible materials mm -hmm. um, and settings is something that we've been working on for some of the major ones like the ninja flex and things like that so i'm going to leave it uh, open so that the oh camera yes. can see it gotcha so now we're just laying our first layer down. So these one, these files that we have on here already just have all the preset G code already on it. So it lays its first layer down, and it'll get into the print here in just a minute. Um, but we yes, we can print with the flexibles. So 
Um, the one that we've we've had success with the uh, you know the semi flex from Ninja Flex. The mm -hmm. actual Ninja Flex itself, we're just fine tuning the settings, but we've gotten it okay. to work before. So Cheetah would work on this, no problem. I, I believe so. Okay. My um, my business partner and actually some of our engineers have been printing with the flexible material that we're actually coming out with. It's really really good material. So we've been getting a lot of great prints from that. So. And then, yeah, we have the USB slot down here, so you can just plug in the thumb drive that we gave you or your own thumb drive, and it'll pop up on the screen as USB. And when it pops up, you can go through the files. You can save them to your actual machine itself, or you can just print them directly from your USB and leave um, the USB stick stuck in there. So. so it looks like the first layer isn't, uh, it's got some gaps in it. Do you see that? Yeah, it might just be slightly low. I didn't love so this. Will just so be, this will be a yeah. This will be a. Uh, this is a raft right here. So. Oh, it's a raft. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we'll print the raft, and then usually we always print with the raft. I, I just like having it, just because it pops off really easily, and it gives okay. you like, that first just base layer. I will. Do you not, Josh, can you ask the chat if they like this camera view, or if they want me to back it out? Yep. I guess they'll I'll hear that. Only dual nozzle you. be available. We're working on the dual nozzle. A lot of people have been asking about the dual nozzle. Um, we have a, if you're in the newsletter on our page, we're going to start sending out updates here in the near future on that. So I'll let you guys know, I want to start showing actually some prints from it um, and things like that. So also if you guys, there's a, have you, have you used the Mosaic manufacturing system? I just sent it back palette? because I'm getting the Palette Plus. Yeah, the Palette Plus. Okay, so we've been using the Palette, the one that you sent yeah. back. Um, we're going to be getting the Palette Plus, but that's a cool machine. It lets you do four different materials at once. Um, I set it up to the R2 here and got it all all rocking and rolling and it's a cool little device so android app is in uh production as well right now um, i wish i had firm dates on all this jeremy but if you send me a message brayden at robo3d.com i'll keep you in the loop oh you just gave out your email over a stream i did uh, hit me up people i usually do so i'll respond hey, i'm always active on it so if you have any questions just feel free to reach out if you're on oh, the when it was printed. actual facebook page here and you're writing comments i will uh I'll answer those as soon as this is over. So, because I can't see, it's kind of far away, but I'll get on there and pop on and answer some of the questions here um, after the fact. So, stay tuned for that. But Looks like for my... all of you that are coming on and don't know where we are, or what we're doing, we are in Joel Telling, the three D printing nerd's garage right now, and we're, we're showing, my nerd garage. showing the R two. And he gave me a tour of all the amazing stuff that he has, all the three D printers, the CNC machine. I mean, he's got so much cool um, stuff here. It's just incredible. So, I do have a few. Yeah, he's got. Uh, he's got his. You have three kids, right? Three kids. That's three right. kids are going to grow up. You know, having the influence of all the this technology around them, which is going to be cool for them. So, I have a couple questions. If yes, there's an onboard camera. There. Yes. Sorry, I didn't even talk about this. I should be talking about that. So, when you're in the cloud app, basically the way you access that is you connect to the same network, um, and then you go into your utilities. There is a network here. You basically go to network status. There is a IP address. You type that into your browser. It'll connect over the, Where is the camera? server. The camera is actually right up here. Oh, it's right in there. Okay. So the camera's in the top right. Uh, yeah, when right you're on there. that server, you can <laughs> you can basically activate the camera. If you're in the app and you're connected to the machine through the app, you can um, click on video and it'll show you the video in the app. I got to tell you, uh, I don't print with wraps. Okay. Some people some people do. Some people I don't. don't. Do, I, don't I don't do it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a wrap guy. Yeah. What what's the reasoning? Because it, I don't need it. I get yeah. I get great adhesion and great first layers, yeah, yeah. and so I don't want to use the plastic. Yeah, I got you. I mean, on my G Max, yeah. it's got a sixteen by sixteen build plate. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, I so rafted that thing, if you did it a takes, big raft, it takes on like that, eight hours just yeah, to make yeah. the raft. Yeah, and you don't have to do the raft on it, obviously. So, um, the ones that we have already preset on the actual machine have them built in, but you can certainly print without it too. Oh, so all, so, okay, so all of the files that are pre-sliced on the machine are, are sliced with the wrap. Yes, yes. Well, that makes sense, though, because you want those to adhere and stick yes. and have a very low chance of failure, Most right? definitely, yeah. So we have, when you plug in the STL, uh, if you have an STL on a thumb drive and you just want to print the STL with the onboard slicing, you can plug it in, and when you go through the slicing wizard, it'll ask you, do you want to wrap, do you want support, things like that. What's your infill, what quality do you want? And okay. uh, it'll go from there. So. so for some of the people just jumping in, what are we printing right now? What is the model? This, this is, is a phone stand, Yeah, right? it's a phone stand. It's one of the prints that are already on the actual machine itself. So I just went through. We have a couple different files that are on here. A test print, um, a birdhouse that we designed, this phone stand. 
Just some simple prints that kind of get you started 3D printing. You designed a birdhouse? I designed it. We designed it, yes. Not me personally, but one of our guys did. It's a really cool birdhouse, actually. Cool. We've done a few different posts about it. So how big is this spool? Is this 500 grams? This is a 300 gram spool. 300 grams, okay. With, yeah. So we have uh, the 500 gram spools. We still, we're actually doing a big deal on the kilogram spools. We're trying to get rid of them and bring, really? in, bring in new wow. spools. So okay. um, we have like a 50% off on those. So. Got a great question yes. from Marcin P. What Marcin is P. the target audience for this printer? Commercial, do-it-yourself maker, or schools? Yeah, this is our high-performance machine, so we obviously made the door so it was uh, ready to go if we put it into an environment that's going to have people that can, so we can jump into it. Questions. So uh, we did education is definitely a big play for us, and obviously prosumers, um, you know, and, and businesses is definitely a play as well. So. We have the once we have the dual extruder capability, it's going to be more you know applicable to businesses wanting to do two different materials at once. Um, but we built this to be a very robust machine um, for prosumers, educators, you know, consumers that want you know additional features and things like that. So and we still give you a lot of the capabilities. So a lot of people when they see this, they think it's a closed source machine, which is the farthest from the truth. Um, we let you use the open source material here, you know, the open source nozzle. Things so like any that. material. So, Yes. Any slicer that spits out G-code. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and then we give you the different platforms that you can actually print from, whether it's the app. Um, and by the way, if you're using Octoprint for every, any of your other printers that you have, you can actually use the app um, as well for those printers. So you don't, it doesn't just connect to our machine, um, any of the Octoprint enabled printers. So. Which is great. And I, I mean, Octoprint itself is very open source. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's very true to us, you know, when we started this business, obviously, is, um, you know, we were... How we learned is not really from school or education per se. We learned from going and watching YouTube videos and going on forums and talking to people and tinkering with things. And that's, well, hey, that's all I did, right? Yeah, and that's all just I got not, this is yeah. you know, Facebook groups, forums, and YouTube videos. We have the greatest resource at our disposal with the click of a button, and so we used that resource and we met a lot of great people, and still some of them we're connected with today. Um, they own our machines. Some of them work for us still from that day, <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's incredible. Incredible community that we've been able to build. We, I think we have about 12,500 members on our forums that are active and discussing print projects and things like that. So I love this industry. I love the people that are involved in it. I love the sharing elements of it. People spend a lot of hard time and you know effort on designing different models and they upload them for the world. So you know people that aren't as you know, skilled as them in the 3D modeling realm can actually download them and print them. So that's what makes it really cool for all of us. When we got into the space, I, you've been printing for a long time. Uh, more, yeah, like two and a half years. Yeah, so we when we started building this, you know, almost five years ago, there was not many models online. You know, you you had to pretty much design. You know, Thingiverse was out uh, there, there was Thingiverse models, was there, but, but it, it wasn't, wasn't as, as prolific. Yes. My mini factory didn't have as much. Yeah, right? exactly. Pin shape wasn't quite there. Yeah. So, I think the, I think having more models kind of comes because and close because we have a lot more people with printers now yeah. who want to design stuff and share it. So I think, I think just getting getting more printers out there is going to get more models, yeah, which no will question. then get more printers. Yeah, vice versa. So the layers are. I mean, it looks it looks good. It's, it's a raft, which I will uh, yeah. I'll let it go. <laughs> If I would have had the no RAF request, I would have done that for you. Would you? Oh. Yeah. But you, I mean, you're gonna have this machine now. You can run it, run it to the, to the depths. I will, I will run a lot yeah. of filament to this machine. <laughs> yeah, I good. guarantee it. Good. Uh, the noise isn't bad. I don't know for everybody that's in the stream right now. Uh, you could, I hopefully you can hear me just fine. The machine itself, though, I hear fan noise from the. There's probably a fan going across the. The fan haven't. Not on the raft yet, but those will activate here. It's a little bit more noise. We are we are testing some different fans as well. well there's a, is there a fan going across the heat sink? Yes. On the, okay. Yes. So there is a fan going on the actual extruder itself right now, um, and then these fans will activate once it gets into the actual print. So okay. That'll cool that down. So we have the two fans from each side that's bringing the cooling down directly at the print. So it's not loud. It's it, it it's making a noise, but it's not a loud noise. No. No. Yeah. And we are, if you eventually get something that covers it, that it, will muffle it, the noise. No question. A bit. Yeah. So, and we definitely we've been you know we've been testing different fans as well because this is probably the loudest thing on it is the fans yeah. itself. So we've been testing different types of fans to kind of you know lower the sound there. But so all in all, the machine is relatively quiet. We've used a lot of different products out in the market, and uh, it, it's pretty quiet in terms of the other machines out there. 
Is there anything that you had hoped for on this machine that didn't make it? I'm trying to think, did we, did we put anything on the list of wants? I mean, we wanted to launch it with the dual extruder sure. ready to go, so that's something that's been delayed longer than we you know, expected and hoped. But uh, in terms of all the elements, we surprisingly got, I mean, I can't think of one off the top of my head that we didn't get into the actual machine. I mean, we even got the camera into this machine. Um, which was what kind of camera? Just a like a two megapixel little yep, just a tiny wall camera. Mm -hmm. Just fits in right into that slot right there, and you know a lot of the design on this too is built for you know manufacturing ease of use if you ever need to work on it. Um, I know people like to hack their printers and things like that, so we built it in a way that that can be done. I mean, you can pull the screws off here. You can take this whole top off, get into your machine, um, do whatever you want to do with it. So. So if you were to take off all the plastic parts and strip it down, you would have, would you have? Metal frame. Metal frame. Yeah. What's the proper, what's kind of a, this so is have, a, we have all a the, Cartesian system. Yeah, we have all the uh, oh. electronics and everything down here, you can see. So that's all accessible. Um, that's actually really nice. So uh, a lot of machines that are running like a type, uh, the type A series one. Yeah. It runs a Raspberry Pi. There's four screws that you have to take off to access the bottom part. Yep. You you have a little. Yeah, lid we just have a, we have a lid right here, so for all of you that want to see that, that's really it's handy. It's just a removable lid, so it lets you get access to everything that's going on inside the machine, that's, all the guts. Okay, that's that's a positive. I like that, and it's not like it's a small. I mean, that's a good access. It's a good. It's, I know, it's, it's a good size. the size of the bottom of the printer. I mean, we've honestly we've thought about it from a lot of different elements. Just small things. It sounds so like silly that I'm talking about this, but. Just, you know, machines usually get Here, wait, dirty. Step off for a sec. Machines usually get yeah. dirty, so we designed it in a way where everything kind of sweeps out of it. When it gets dirty, it doesn't get caught in little crevices, things like that. So, so this is handy. So usually when you have a door, it'll open like that. It doesn't open all the way, but it does open back some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that gives you some room to, to work. That's that's a good design decision. Yeah, you can, uh, this is a, you can actually remove that door as well. So it's just screwed on. Oh, now it's making the first layer of the part itself. It's laying down a really good bead of plastic, that's for sure. Uh, Very Lulzbot, good beads of plastic. Lulzbot has <laughs> hexagon hot ends. Yeah. They've always, they always, they have a, the nozzle has a bit more of a flatter tip, yep. doesn't it? So it really, it lays a smooth yep. layer. Yeah, we've been using these since we had the R1 Plus, so. Um, you know, we've seen probably 20, 30 different suppliers of hot ends. We've tested them all, and um, these ones have been, you know, very reliable. So, you know, what, you know, I think extruder clogging has been like a big issue in the industry. We've surprisingly had very little so far since we've been testing and seen them out in the field. So that's definitely a positive. Um, and obviously, if it ever is an issue, it's quick access. So, is there? Is there a material, I want to ask Joel this question, uh -oh. because I'm always wondering, is there a material that you are dying to print with that either is not out yet, or um, maybe it's in a more expensive machine? Uh, there's a couple. So I like um, I like the stainless steel from Protopasta. Yep. I do want to have a, a, a hardened uh, nozzle on it first before I throw it in there. Yeah. But on this machine, um, I think I'm gonna get some cheetah, some Ninja, Ninja okay. Flash cheetah. Yep, yep. I, I, I like cheetah because it's it's a semi flex, yep. but it prints well on a direct drive system. Yep. Uh, but I I really want to throw um, wood filaments through. Yes. Because I've I've had wood filaments on a couple different machines. And wood filaments, my favorite, by the way. If you guys haven't printed <laughs> with it, please go print with it. It's I awesome. it jams more than any other <laughs> filament I have, and I think it's because of the the. It's a they have wood wood particulates yeah. in it, or the, mm -hmm. whatever the organics are. That as it goes through the nozzle, it, it which it wood burns. filament are you using? I've used uh, Hatchbox. I've used okay. Colorfab, yep. and I've used there was another one that I can't recall right now. Because there's quite a few different types. Like, yeah. I mean, some the Colorfab one is the one that we've used a lot of. It's been great. Um, we sell our own with the which is a little slightly more on the plastic side than on the oh, okay. very very wood wood side. Um, so it just depends on which one you're using as well. But there's also uh, I'm not sure if I got it in 285 or 175. There's a there's a filament. It's a metallic filament yes. from Virtual Foundry. Yes. And it's it's we got have some in our office. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's like brass. It, yeah. It's it's like a brass paste, right, yeah. or something yeah. like that. We've, we've been printing with it, so it's cool. Does it work we, ha cool? we haven't actually kilned it yet, so we haven't gotten the true metal properties out of it. But we've gotten it. We're printing it right now, which is cool. So yeah, it's a great great material. 
So we're still rocking and rolling here. I love that I've mentioned Sweet. materials and you know what I was talking about. Sweet. I, I know Virtual Foundry very well. I love those guys. Um, you want to test the, should we test the, the detection sensor? Here, let's turn it around. Ready? Let's see if, let's see if this bad boy rocks. Yeah, so, I've got it. my cuts. We're going we're gonna to see if this detection sensor actually stops the print. All right. So, we're out of material. It's going to run it through. No, I should probably, yeah, let's do that because that's going to take a while. See what I'm doing? I'm doing sketchy things in an initial demo live on, I hope this actually works. So what will happen is if it stops detecting it, it won't stop the second it stops. It will notice it, it'll go through its final step. It's on a G-code and it'll actually stop after the fact. So it should stop here in just a minute. Well, it has to bring the filament past the sensor it's not itself, yet. It's right? Not yet. Yeah, so it has to bring it through the actual sensor. Once the sensor is deactivated, um, it will then this stop. This is a live the test, Braden. This is a live test. Oh, that one paused. So our live oh, video, live okay. video ended on. It stopped. Okay, so it stopped the actual print. Okay, what's on the screen? It says on this uh, screen, please, please reload more filament onto the printer. It has been paused, then resume the print. Okay, so to take out the filament, how do we? So we literally, you just press this down. Oh, we do that. Pull it okay. Out. So I want to load. I can pull the material out. I just want to load a different material. Let's load it. Okay, so I'm going to put on the 3D Fuel APLA. Is it's this? So this is printed the same temp, right? Exact same temp. Yep. Okay. Cool. So I'm just. Is it 190? Yeah, we'll go 190. Okay. Cool. Yeah, perfect. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pump this through here. Oops. Sorry. Right. Well, here I should be doing this, right? <laughs> All right. So then it goes in here. Yep. Okay, and I push down. Push that down. I know it's a little. How far down do I push it? Just keep going all the way till. Yep, that's perfect. Right there. Okay. So you and can then actually just move that out. that excess. Okay. You press OK. It goes in and you press resume. It will go down. And it will start printing from that same spot. Just like that. Looks like there's still some blue in there. Yeah, there might be a little bit of blue still running through there. I noticed even when you... There, there it is. Okay, so it's that, that was actually the test worked. And yeah. so it, it noticed it, it stopped it. I did notice that as it pulls the nozzle away, it does bring a little bit of filament with it. Yeah. Which I, I mean, it. I, I guess you could, you could put a big, bigger retraction on it, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, at that point, at that point, you have recovered your print, yeah, yeah. which I think is the most important thing. That that's. I mean, we got that a lot with R1 Plus. Just people talking about like I ran out of material and then it clogged my hot end, things like that. So that's something that we wanted to do to prevent that from happening. So people. Can, if they're 40 hours into a print and they run out, run out of material, they can still finish that print. Does this have power off and resume? If it actually powers off, no. It, oh. doesn't, it won't resume if it, like the power shuts out right here, yeah. we won't be able to resume the print from there. Okay. Yeah. I know that's something that a lot of people have been asking and requesting. Something we're definitely looking into, but it's not on this machine at the moment. Well, something like that, I mean, you're running Octo Print. If it's, it, it just has to remember the last line, yes. the last line of G code, and then some sort of atomic file, right, yeah. that keeps switching back yeah, and yeah. forth. Mm -hmm. and, and then make sure that it's not, it didn't get off of the point that it was actually at. Yeah. So the homing mechanism had to stay, it basically it would have to lock your printer. Right. At that, at that spot. It's looking fantastic. Yeah, it's looking nice. I'm excited. I'm glad, uh, How are we doing in the chat, Josh? Any questions? Pretty good. We're mostly talking amongst ourselves right now. Okay. I hope everybody's having fun in the chat. I'm really glad everybody's having a chance to watch this. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. I know we got about 20 people in on this Facebook right now, so the, uh, five people in and out. I, I am excited to try this printer, and I'm going to be honest. I'm going to throw everything at it okay. because uh, I think you deserve that much. Yeah, of course. I see this printer as, from the design perspective, a massive upgrade from yeah. the R1 and the R1 yeah. Plus style of no things. No question. Because you, essentially you put a plastic frame over an i3 yeah. and that and you had your interesting bed leveling. Yeah. This is this is better. And I like that the user interface is very friendly as far as all the, the Harry Potters that are in there. Yeah. 
coming, especially, I mean, Joel, if you've seen his YouTube channel, uh, we're not on the live stream anymore on Instagram, but the Facebook users. Um, hey, Facebook. He's, uh, he's very hey, good YouTube. at breaking down how to use 3D printing in a practical and simple way. We asked um, some people that printer, uh, my garage is where printers go to die. Yeah. <laughs> so he, yeah, he's, he's rough on them, but he also talks about them very well um, to his audience. I think I heard one time you called yourself like the dad of 3D printing. Yeah, or, I, uh, would you say or, I, the, I have I have the I have the dad brand. The dad brand. The, dad, the, the dad, dad brand, brand of 3D printing, of 3D printing, yes. printing right? Yeah. Terrible jokes and, <laughs> and not the highest technical knowledge, but I know how to get stuff done. Yes, and you explain you explain in a good way, and you obviously show a lot of cool stuff that you can actually make. So I think that's important. What I'm kind of excited for is I'm going to give my kids the opportunity to use this. Yes. Because they know how to find things online. I can show them how to put it on uh, a thumb drive. drive. Yep. On our, and then I can show them how to put it in here and hit print. Yep. Uh, loading the filament, it's pressing down right here. I have to press a little harder than is, what I'm initially comfortable with. Yep, I agree. Does that it's, make sense? It's a little, no, it is. It's a little stiff right there. Um, obviously, there's a lot of pressure with the actual gear pressing on the material. Yeah. So, um, that's one of the things that you know on the maybe that's one of the wish list items. I wish that was a little easier to press down, uh, but well, it's my own uh, preconceived notion yep. of what I believe the pressure should be when oh, I push agreed. down, right? Yep, I agree. Uh, I like the the what's the right word? The kinematics. Yes. Is that the, 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 everything up top. It's it feels it feels very it feels Ultimaker, but it's it's too. In either direction, yeah, yeah. rather than one rod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you still, you know, I don't know. My, you kind of mentioned this, and one of my favorite things, honestly, is the fact that you can sort of access everything. I think that's really important, especially for, like I said, the people that want to tinker, or hack on it, things, or want to just get into the electronics and check everything out. Um, you can really just dive deep into it. You can take this thing apart. You know, you can. It's just, it's built like that. It's not like a closed system that you can't touch or anything. So one of the things that I was kind of impressed with is the spool holders. If you look, the spool holder, let's see if I can take that off. The spool holders just fold up into the machine and that's it. So it's not in the way, it, it doesn't feel like the spools were just an afterthought. Yeah. It feels like you actually put some thought into what do we need to do here. Well, we, yeah, we didn't. So having the spools on the back and taking up additional space front to back was not ideal um, because then it's just a bigger footprint right. that has to take, but being able to be able to store it away at least um, and then pop those down when you want to reuse it is nice. So I think it's cool. a little bit of flexibility. Until you get the dual extruder going, I mean, you have space for another roll of filament, yep. which mm -hmm. is kind of handy. Yep. Uh, I, think, I think Robo's made some good decisions in this printer. Good job, Braden. Thanks. Like I said, this, uh, you know, I have an incredible team and it's been a couple of years in the making of this product. So we've put a lot of time and energy into it and hard work and, um, you know, with a, a pretty small, amazing engineering team. So they, they pulled off some miracles, just getting everything kind of in sync. When you touch, talk about the, the touch screen here, when you talk about the, uh, still printing the actual app itself. I know why it's, pretty it's, it's pretty robust. I mean, you should be okay even doing that. So, if if you had this in a car yes. and you had a power inverter and you could power it in the car and you put it in the passenger seat and you were printing, could you drive from San Diego to Seattle doing a print? That'd be an amazing test. We should do that on the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have to be on the live stream for twelve hours. No, I, I, that'd be that'd be a good test, honestly. It feels sturdy. It's very sturdy. It's very sturdy. Everything's built really nicely in place. I mean, everything's, I mean, we have amazing checks in our manufacturing, so everything's checked that it's really tight. I mean, at place. first glance, it looks, it looks plasticky, yeah. the, but not, the R1 looks plastic, yes, right? Yes. This looks plasticky, but in an updated sort of way. I think, but our, then when you pick it up and hold it, it feels sturdy and robust. Yeah. It doesn't feel like a, like, it doesn't feel flimsy. Yeah. It and it's cool, you got the little handles down here. You can pick it up really nicely and easily. Oh yeah, this um, was, this was great. So having those allows you to transport it pretty easily, which is cool. Um, same with the, the smaller version, the Robo C2. So that one's even a lot lighter and you can pick that up from the bottom as well. So, and we designed the box also, if you're ever gonna transport this somewhere else, you can just put it back in this box, put the top on and carry it with the handle there. 
So you are proud of the boxes. I'm really proud of the box. <laughs> I'm proud of every like. There's a lot of minor details um, that we spent a lot of time on. Um, just even the finish of these side panels, just small things that uh, meant a lot to us when we were designing this. So well, I remember when I had a startup company and I wrote a function that displayed something on the screen, and when you swiped it out of the way, something came forward. And I remember I was so proud of the way it just came forward. Yeah. No one was going to see it, yeah. but I was so proud That's of it. That's the thing. Is most so you're proud of your little TV widgets here in your nope. box and your. Yep. Most people I think it's an afterthought that. and they might throw it to the side, but for us. Um, it was really part of the experience that we we're trying to build uh, from the ground up. So, I mean, just, I mean, everything, little details on the side with the logos, you know, obviously all the functionality on the touchscreen itself. Um, a lot of time and energy went back into it. If you have a machine, um, update it if you haven't, because we have a new screen design on it. Um, that gives you a couple of additional monitoring features. So, in tests. Yes. How has this performed at extremes? So extreme overhangs or bridges or? It's performed really well. So I'm actually excited for you to, to put it to some of those tests as well. Um, you know, we've done our own internal tests, lots of them, and it's it performed extremely well in bridge scenarios, things like that. So it'll be cool to kind of see Joel dive into it and see what he actually creates and, you know, the different tests he puts it under. And, you know, I hope it lives up to your expectations. So. I do as well, right? Yeah. And that's just it. I don't. I don't want printers to die. Yeah. I want. I want everything to thrive, and yep. I want the community to just be full of awesome printers yep. and awesome filaments. It's just unfortunate because that doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. It's a. T I mean, you know, it's still a very. I mean, I listened to you talk about it. You know, even years ago about the infancy of three D printing. It's still very new. I mean, it's becoming more it's and more mainstream. There. There's more people talking about it. Uh, I think the industry went from this really big hype. And then kind of flatlined, and now it's hyping up again, which is cool. Okay. Um, to be a part of that, so. Uh, I like I, to compare it to the video game industry. Yeah. Where are we if if we follow video games from Pong to the PS4? Yep. Where is where are we at in three D printing? And I want to say that we're kind of in the ColecoVision okay. area. Yeah. We're kind of we're we're in the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. We know people like to play games. Yeah. Yeah. We have these systems in place that people can use to always play a game, and yeah. it always works. Yeah. Every once in a while. Like the old Nintendo, you have to blow on the cartridge yeah, yeah, yeah. or dust off the machine. <laughs> that's a, that's actually a good analogy. But I, I think that I think that we're we're, we're entering ColecoVision Atari Twenty Six Hundred days. Yep, I, I agree. think. Who agrees with that? Anyone on the stream? I don't know. Is there, any, more, even... is there any questions? Uh, do you want to open it up for some questions? Yeah, let's ask. Let's answer some questions. Uh, and anyway, it doesn't even have about... to be about the R two. Yeah, it can be about because Brain here has been three D printing for a long time. I've been three D so printing for five years. So. Okay. Uh, have five had a couple questions about yeah. speed and speed capabilities, like what speed is it printing right now, and what speeds does it print? This is what, 30, so, 40? So we're printing, I think, right, the millimeters per second is 50. The travel speed can go. I can increase this thing directly from the actual machine itself Do it. right now. So let's go print tuning, print speed, and I can just... Just turn it up, and you'll hear it start to kick into gear here in just a second so oh, it's got to get through those lines of g-code that yeah. it has cached or? yeah i mean it print it's like we said it's a pretty robust machine and we built it so you can kick it up a notch uh, if you want it there you go if you want to increase the speed it's always fun to find limits yes but I mean, but at the same time, it's not. Everybody wants to know the limit, but then everybody's gonna go back to fifty to sixty to yep. print their stuff that yep. they like because yeah. it's the best. Yeah, always, you know that's definitely that's a great point. Honestly, like you, depending on what you're printing, you might want to adjust certain things. Whether you want it to be finer quality, uh, if you're printing something with a lot of high detail, you might want to go a little bit slower, um, things like that. So you, as you get into it and you start printing stuff and, and making cool things, you'll see sort of how the product comes out and, and some fine-tuned adjustments that you can actually make um, as you're printing, so. There we go. Any what other? Any other? Um, how about hardened nozzle capability? Is it standard E6 nozzle? So it comes with the hex hot end, but the hex hot end, it comes with the brass version of it, but the hex hot end has a hardened stainless steel nozzle that you can add and upgrade to it. So um, the hex gun, they have that, or uh, Micro Swiss has, yes. has hex gun hot ends available. In fact, 
Uh, My, yeah, Micro Swiss has the whole actual. I have thing some as well. 0.5 millimeter Micro yeah. Swiss hardened cool. nozzles that I could actually throw on this yeah, thing. Yeah, that would be awesome. Throw it up, throw it on there. 0.5. That'd yeah. be kind of fun. Wouldn't yeah, that'd be cool. Let's check it out. Is it going to come with a R2 D2 paint job? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people ask because we have the. Uh, we have the R2, the Robo R2, and then we have the Robo C2, and a lot of people are mad that we didn't call it the How did you not the call it the D2? I know, a lot of people are mad we didn't call it the D2, um, but... You missed the boat. I know, man. we missed it. And it was like time the time, it was like the time that we should have been calling it that, too. You could make a special we, edition C2 we and could. call it the D2. Yeah. It, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I hope someone takes it and paints it. The R2 D2 colors. That would make me really happy. That'd be, actually that would be fun. I think we should do that, Joel. Yeah. That well, we sweet. could put some we could put some wheels on this yeah. in a dome. <laughs> yeah, have it, you know, as and it's have printed, a and run it around. Yeah, printer. there you go. I like it. Um, what kind of stepper drivers is it using? Just the NEMA, the standard NEMA. Um, NEMA. Mo I want to get crap. My NEMA seventeens, right? Yeah, the NEMA seventeens. NEMA seventeens. Are they looking for the drivers like the tri triminic, tri whatever the? They're uh, everything's a, it's a. Everything's in NEMA 17, but as far as the the driver chips, uh, do you know the, the chips? I actually don't know that actually. While it's you're, right, it's right there. While you're looking, Joel, a question for you: What yes. was the first thing you ever printed? Oh, the first thing I printed. I have it somewhere. I may have moved it when I was cleaning. Uh, the first thing I printed was the little Flash Forge Creator Pro uh, traffic cone. Oh, because it was it. the Pro, it was dual color, and it came with orange ABS and white, white. ABS. And so it was color. perfect. Nice. Hi, Riley. Hi. Do you want to come see this printer printing? The first thing I ever printed, this is actually a true story, is we printed a bracket to make our initial R1 work better. So it essentially built itself into a better machine using itself. Which is really quite interesting. A lot of people always talk about can 3D printers make other 3D printers? You can go. Well, that was kind of like the starting stage of what got us excited about the capabilities of it. Right now, it's printing a phone stand right up there. See how I picked it up? Yeah. So this has a touch screen on it, and the touch screen is pretty easy to use. And so what I'm going to do is have each of you kids all try to print something with this printer all by yourself without me helping at all. You gotta say hi to the live stream too. Oh, no, I'm gonna say. <laughs> and you're wearing an evil Knievel shirt. It's very cool. Joel telling dad, husband. Yeah. 3D printing nerd. That's me. Software engineer. Yeah. He does it all. I wrote a game called Orange Banana. Did you? And tell I, me it about might, this. It might, tell it me might about still be on the app stores, but okay. uh, uh, it, the idea would be on the center of the screen, you would have an orange or a banana. Okay. And if it was an orange, you'd have to drag it up to the orange pile. And but if it was a banana, you'd have to drag it down to the banana bunch. And as I you drag it. the orange to the orange pile or the banana to the banana bunch, it would say orange and it would say banana. Orange. So orange, 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 banana, 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 orange, banana, banana, orange, banana. I love it. Yeah. It's like a it's like a mind training game. It was crazy. It was uh It was crazy. It was crazy. I, yeah, because I keep trying to play it to yeah. see who could do it the fastest. What more do we want to go into here? I don't know. What else I, I have a bunch of different questions I wanted to ask. Any more questions from the stream, Joel. Josh? Yeah, let's ask the stream. There are a few. Okay. Um, uh, everybody, big round of applause uh, for right. Loud Josh. He's the one uh, <laughs> running the stream. He's the one that's making sure everybody's being cool. He's the one getting the questions to us. So if you can, throw a high five to Loud Josh, please. Just bought a C2 tonight. Will the attachment be available for the C2? Yes, it's already, the attachment's already on there on the C2. For the, I think they're talking about the leveling. Uh, C2, C2 does auto leveling yes, as so well. It has that as well. So it's already standard on the actual machine. So. What was the idea behind? Thank the, you, by the way, for being uh, a customer. Behind offering an R2 and a C2, where you, what, what's, What's the major difference between the two that went that caused you to go with two? We want to, you know, we wanted to. We've we came into the industry with this, you know, at the time, a really, you know, it's outlived itself a little bit, but it was a really unique, cool looking machine at a good price point, and so we want to stay true to that and have an option that was, you know, a little bit more affordable for people okay. if they want to get into three D printing, and 
Um, still has a decent size build volume, five by five by six. Um, but that's really like your beginner, ready to rock. You know, is this still running at hexagon hot end? Compact three D printer, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, and a heated bed still? Yeah, few thi No, it doesn't have a heated bed. Okay. So you're, you're missing the heated bed on it. Uh, it doesn't have an onboard camera. Uh, but a lot of the other features it actually has. It has the filament runout detection. It's got a little bit of a smaller screen here. Um, still has onboard slicing and things like that, so you can do a lot. Onboard of slicing and filament out detection on a cheap. How, how much cheaper? Seven ninety nine. Okay, so yeah. it's it's sub sub one thousand yeah. dollars, and it does have some pretty decent features. Oh yeah, it. still let's use open source uh, materials that are out there. So I don't think people realize how awesome filament detection is. And some of you may already have it, but I remember on my GMAX printer. Yeah. I you know I've got prints that go one hundred and twenty hours, one hundred and forty hours, and if I'm near the end of a roll. And I don't think it's going to go all night. I'm going to have to set an alarm or stay up to yeah, watch yeah. it. Where I could detect the outage, have it pull away, and wait for me to come yep, to yep. it. Yeah, and it'll yeah, it's going to stay there till your press resume, pretty much. So, um, any troubles with it pulling away? Because it keeps the nozzle hot, right? Do you run into any issues or? No, we haven't run into any issues with it actually ruining the print itself. Okay. Um, nothing like that now, because it. What it does is it brings the entire platform down so you're away from it. So if there's any like spillage yeah, I saw that. over time, yeah. um, it's not going to be on the actual print itself. Um, so uh, two two different questions here that I like. Okay. Um, turnaround time on replacements slash how easy is it to um, re like replace part maintenance. How yeah. is maintenance? So we have uh, an amazing, my business partner just built out, it's an amazing like troubleshooting Kobe? area for the entire thing. Yeah, Kobe. Kobe's cool, you guys. I met Kobe. Yeah, yeah Kobe's awesome. Um, he's the guy that has been in the weeds with me building this business you know, ever since day one. So he was the guy that actually built a prosthetic leg using a 3D printer back in uh, 2012 for his mechanical engineering class. That is cool. Um, he designed a really really robust troubleshooting um, system for it. So it is really easy. I mean, you have any potential issues with it in the future, it's very easy to get into the machine. Like I said, you have access to the all the electronics, everything, the Raspberry Pi, everything inside, the motors inside here. And then on top of that, this whole top piece lifts out with a few screws and you have access to the entire gantry system as well. So. If you need to tighten something, anything like that, we have all the tools necessary, um, and, and you know, with a couple of screws loosened, you'll be you'll be inside the machine. Let's say for some reason the the RP3 in here dies, and they need a new Raspberry Pi. Yep. If they call up support, how long does it take to get the new one out? So we are aggressively uh, ramping up all replacement parts, even for the R1 Pluses, because we still support the R1 Plus, even though we're not selling it this time. Uh, we still support it, so we're going to have plenty of replacement parts if ever is necessary. So okay. um, right now, as we got the new machines in, we were waiting for new replacement parts. It had a slight delay on those replacement parts, so some people have had to wait if they didn't need anything. For example, like you know maybe something damaged in the shipping, um, which you know we're solving all those issues now. We're having very few of those, especially now with working with the carrier. But we'll have replacement parts. We want to have them within that within a 24-hour period. Okay. Set. So that's our goal. And I've had a few questions about availability, as in where to buy and where it ships. Specifically, does it ship to Australia? We do ship to Australia, and we actually have our twos going to Australia. So we're do you have a reseller in Australia? Yeah, we have Barwon, B-A-R-W-O-N. Um, they'll be having some of our 3D printers here in the near future. So you won't have to pay, pay the excessive shipping costs from the U.S. to Australia, which does get pretty pricey when you're shipping on Shipping anything to size. Australia is just... Absurd. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can ship a, a sock to Australia. It costs about thirty bucks. So, um, yeah, if you can, you can go check them out. We're gonna we're building out a rese reseller. Um, you know, Matter Hackers has been a great reseller of ours. Uh, so you can go check them out. You can go check out our website, robo3d.com. So there's lots of lots of resources to actually get the unit. But I love I love Matter Hackers. You know, as one of our resellers and partners, just because we've been honestly we've been with them from the start. <laughs> They, they, oh, they sold the R1s. They right? sold the R1s, and we used uh, Matter Control on the R1s. We sold Matter Control bundles with the uh, the touch device that they had. So, um, you know, they've been we've kind of grown up with them in this industry, which is cool. So, they're a good supporter of ours, and you know, we obviously support them. So, it's a great great place to go grab one. And Canada. Yes, Canada as well. So, some distributors in Canada. If you're in uh, actual in Canada, we have. Uh, you know, Synex, which sells it, DNH, Canada. 
Um, I have to find out. There is a few resellers that uh, we actually sell through in Canada. As okay. Well. Yeah. And what are each of your favorites, uh, filament brand and type? Love Color Fab. Love Proto Pasta. <laughs> We've been talking to these guys for a long time too. What's cool being in this industry for so long is we've been at we were at the first you know some of the first trade shows that 3d printing was introduced and uh if you've ever been to the consumer electronics show in las vegas um i know joel's you've been there i went there yeah yeah um huge huge electronic show your booth was busy i couldn't even stop by it was so busy <laughs> we were there the first year that they had a 3d printing zone and that was in 2013 i believe and there was only about 15 companies total that's 3d printing hardware that's 3d printing services 3d printing scanning everything and uh, and the next year was about 178. So we've been through like the boom of seeing kind of 3D printing grow. But we've seen a lot of the partners like Colorfab, Protopasta, and things like that that actually you know kind of started at the same time we did and have built our business. So I like those two materials. I uh, love NinjaFlex. Love Tallman. He's been around for a long time. Tom, Tom's Island. good people. Uh, he's great people. And uh, you know I I'm I'm really interested in this virtual foundry stuff. So. I have it upstairs, so I can't yeah. wait to get to I'm it. I'm excited to start printing with that and killing it and trying to get some metal stuff. I should need that. I, I, I still need to answer, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. My current favorite filament is, of course, High Five Blue, the yes. filament oh. I just made with Proto Pasta. So I haven't, I wish we, we should have brought that down and actually printed it on here, but he has. Joel, tell him about the. Proto Pasta and I. Well, I okay. So and you guys. Yeah, so everybody that doesn't know, um, Josh and I took a trip down to Protopasta, and we used uh, their HTPLA V3 base pellets. We added a really awesome blue pellet at a certain percentage, and then Alex threw some caffeine powder, some actual 100% <laughs> caffeine. It'll kill you if you eat it. There's so much in there. Uh, we threw it into the filament, and we made filament, and it's oh, and some sparkly bits too. And it is like a metallic. It looks. Blue. It looks it's, incredible. You just killer. showed it to me. It's, it is killer. It looks. I, I mean. It, oh yeah. That was printed. Here's some of it. I get getting some glistening of light on it. If you can see that, it's just a really, really cool. Sp there we go. The blue ones. color. It's got. Oh, it's just got an amazing. It's probably hard to see it from here, but it's just got an amazing, like shine, uh, metallic type look to it. Where do you see it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick some of this up and definitely be printing with it. I'm sure you're gonna be printing with it. Oh, it's so cool. I'll be printing with it. Yeah. While we're looking at those, I do want to give a huge shout out to Michael Escamilla for his fourteen dollar donation. Michael who? Escamilla. Michael Hopefully Escamilla. I that right. I hope I'm pronouncing that right as well. Thank you for the fourteen dollar super chat, you sir. You get a high five from me and Braden. Lower, lower, upper. There, right there. There it is. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. That's actually the, anytime someone sends a super chat, then the yes. chat stays on the screen longer. And the super chats go to, because Josh doesn't work for peanuts. And yes, so I have yes. to pay Josh. Yes. <laughs> Josh is my assistant, but I still have to pay Josh. Yes. So this goes to the, the pay Josh fund. And uh, Thy Shall Smite just gave $2. Thy Shall Smite, thank you for the $2. Thy Shall Smite. And is I asking if it's that. optimated for uh, both ABS and PLA. Yes, it is for both. So, as a removable heated platform here, it'll get up, you know, to the temps 100C, 110C. You can do the ABS type stuff on it. You load it in the same way you would load in the PLA. When you're going to the actual screen to print, it'll ask you, do you have ABS or PLA? You just choose ABS and you're rocking. I had a question. Yes. So being an open design, and you have the filament out sensor in the back, and then you have the guide tube into the direct drive system. What if there was some sort of enclosure on top that included a sideways filament spool holder with a little guide tube down to here? And so the filament out detector was in the top to a tiny tube. So it just went directly through the top. So, yeah. so instead of on the back here, you had it about that much taller with a little... That would that'd be... That would be interesting, that'd wouldn't be, it? Yeah, that'd be perfection. We could deactivate this one and activate that one. It'd be really easy. Or take this one off. Or take it off completely and yeah. reuse it. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of cool ways that yeah, yeah, I yeah. can mod. But, but because of this, this ribbon cable, this could be fit inside fairly easily. Yeah, it would, most it would, definitely. It would fold up just fine. It oh, wouldn't yeah. provide any added wear or tear. Hi, Sid. Uh, and then with the More filament coming through the top. Kids coming around. Love uh, it. With the filament coming through the top then, and it, that might be interesting. 
That could be pretty cool. So is this a loner, or am I keeping this one? You're, jo Joel, you're keeping this one. Okay, so I can modify it. Yes. I will review its stock first before I attempt any sort of I, <laughs> modifications to the machine. Yes, I will. I can't wait to see, you know, another reason why I love this community and our customers is just they're creating all sorts of incredible things on top of the machine. So we've seen, that, like, you know, with the R1 Plus, we've seen a lot of people do the dual extrusion for the R1 Plus. Uh, we've seen people make chocolate extruders, all sorts of fun stuff. We've well, I think one of, the, one of the more popular modifications to the R1 Plus was the E3D V6, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of people really like A lot of people did like the that. E3D V6, yeah. yeah. So, um, we, you know, they're designed in that way. They're designed to, you know, for the people that want to dive into it. Some people, you know, majority of people might not want to do them. They want to just start printing, you know, stuff right out of the box. And then some people might want to get into it and, and you know, hack it a little bit, if you will. So it gives you that functionality. Hey, $5 from Shep, C-H-E-P, all capital letters, sending help to pay Josh. Oh, that's uh, Chuck Hellebuck. Oh, Chuck! Chuck Hellebuck. Chuck Hellebuck's High five. Thanks, Chuck. electronic products. High five, High five from me. Chuck. From Josh. We have any... Yeah, so it, I've had the E3D V6 for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you said that. Chuck is a wonderful person in the 3D printing community. He likes to use machines for practical purposes. Okay. And I think that, I think that, uh, I, I think that this would be an interesting machine for someone like him. Yes. Someone that likes to modify and tinker because you do you do have the presentation for for an all inclusive unit. Yep. But but I mean you strip away some of this stuff and it's just it's it's a bare bones. Uh, structure yeah. just waiting for things to go on. Yep, yep. That's interesting. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Everybody check out Chuck Hellebuck. Chuck Hellebuck, please. He'll be at the Detroit Maker Fair. Chuck Hellebuck, I don't know if I've met you at any of the shows, if you're at a lot of them, because I'm always at the shows that we... Are you going to Detroit Maker Fair? I'm not... Well, the ones we exhibit at, we're not exhibiting at that one. No. Um, but I, I really want... Maker Fair? I really want to go. Not, we're not exhibiting that one either. You should just fly out to Detroit for Maker Fair yeah. and just get a badge and walk around and see. All I know. I really stuff. want to do that. So I'm going to start getting more active in things like that. Even if we're not exhibiting, I just want to be there and see what's going on. For everybody that's actually down in San Diego for San Diego Comic Con, Braden will be at San Diego Comic Con Saturday. Yes, Saturday. If you go to the San Diego Central Public Library booth, our printer will be in there. <laughs> so we have a lot of printers at that. That's cool. At the library, actually, they've opened it up to the public. They've done three D printing Which classes. Which printer? This one. Uh, the C two will be at that actual event, uh, but they've been doing three D printing classes, and they've gotten just literally hundreds of people from the community to come in and learn three D printing. Which That's is really great. Cool. One of the things that I did that I actually got a lot of feedback from teachers and educators was my tutorial on how to make a fidget spinner yes. using uh, Autodesk's Fusion 360. Cool, yeah. Because it took five minutes of design and it was a 45 minute print, but it showed something cool. Yep. And it, it really jump-started a yeah. lot of people and showed them that design wasn't that hard. So I bet there are people that saw my tutorial and went to that library and, and printed, printed it printed out. off, yes. I love it, we have a note. Did the dogs get, <laughs> the dogs no, get the dogs fed. have not been fed. From the family. Also, uh, another $5 from David Hatton, uh, wanting to know where the machine is manufactured. Oh. David Hatton, thank you so much for the $5. Josh, we'll get to eat tomorrow. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a very kind individual. The but as far as manufacturing, yes. Braden can tell you all about that. The machine that. is manufactured over in China. We're partnered with Foxconn. Um, been over there a few times. actually went twice last month, which was a lot of fun. I got to be a part of the manufacturing process. You know, help the team out with building this machine, uh, oversee everything that was happening. I actually did a live stream from there, which is really cool. Um, the team's amazing, honestly, phenomenal group of people. Uh, Foxconn's an incredible company. Um, you know, they had their hard times back a couple years ago. I was just ago. gonna say, has in your, from what you know, have they changed from the early Apple days to a thousand percent? They're changed. I mean, they're just the working conditions. Everything is is phenomenal there. Um, I was honestly proud to be there and see the product being made there. And, Great. Um, it was just a really, you know, humbling experience to see that. So, two dollars from Habiteer Workshop. Hey, Habiteer Workshop, thank you for the two dollars. Josh can afford a Mountain Dew tomorrow because of you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Or Red Bull. Well, no, no, Josh is small, small Red Josh's Bull. vice is Mountain Dew. <laughs> Mountain Dew. All right, all right. Mountain Dew. Kickstart. Mountain Dew. This is me. 
kickstart Mountain Dew, anything Mountain Dew, I have a problem. You cut me open, I believe Mountain Dew. Will you all continue to support the R1s? Yes, we will continue to support the R1s. So. Uh, so the question from the Facebook page was asking Braden if the R1 printers are still supported, and Braden... Yes, we yes. do support them. They're uh, they're not on the site for sale right now, but um, you can still pick some, out, uh, pick some up in some different channels, but we will continue to support them. So if someone were to pick up an R1 secondhand and they had an issue with it, they can talk to support. Yes, we will Great. support it. We have replacement parts still for it. So yes, that is our staple machine. That's the machine that you know kicked off this business, and it's something that you know. We're Do you know how many of those machines are out there? We have, I think, tens of thousands of them out there. That's a lot. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Worldwide. Yeah. I think we we did we actually did this. Uh, I went and did an entire map of everywhere our product is, and it was about I think it was. 4,515 cities across 99 countries or something like that. So I went and literally got everything mapped it out and uh, and literally counted everything. Jeez, it was cool. Man. So yeah, it's that that machine's been all over the world, and you know we're excited to, to launch these new machines. These are been these have been our wish list printers, you know, for the past two and a half years. So it's cool to see them out in the wild and see people using them and having success with them. I'm gonna hop on the. Let's see if we have anything on the. Quite a this few. is still going good. So this is printing with the 3D Fuel IPLA, and it's doing a fine job. Someone said we're overpriced like the Maker Boss. Awesome printers. One Here's the sure. okay. So Brayden just saw a comment on Facebook talking about being overpriced like Maker Bots, and the problem with 3D printing is you still have a very large sector of people who are incredibly intelligent and who can build anything. And their idea of an expensive 3D printer is is so much less than what others is because they know how to build and tinker, and they they can find drivers and they can find scrap extrusion and they can put together something that lays down plastic. Yep. So you're always going to have people that say, "Oh, that $500 printer is too expensive." You're yeah. always going to have people say that $3,000 printer is too expensive. Yeah. And somewhere in there is a truth, yes. but the truth is dependent on who you are and what your abilities are and how much time you have. Well said, well said. Yeah, I mean, so, we, we got started thinking everything was too expensive. <laughs> and so we started building our own machine. Um, and that's how we got excited about the industry. That's how we you know, wanted to come out with our first gen product. Um, it was to create an affordable solution. Uh, this one obviously is the more high performance one. We have the C2, which is the, you know, the more affordable one. That one's seven ninety nine, so um, you know you have a little bit of a variance in what you're looking for. Ten dollars from Performance Three D P saying, "Get Josh a big bag of peanuts and a couple of Red Bulls." We've already covered. I don't drink the Red Bull. Are we still going at the super but speed? I will I'm saying yes. Go some slow energy it drinks with that ten dollars. So to thank you and Is high it? five. It's probably because I needed didn't heat it up. Just getting some clicks. Okay, I was busy doing something. What was that and who was that? That was $10 from Performance 3DP. Performance 3DP, $10. Thank you so very much. And you get to eat tomorrow and have a drink and, and yep. all that stuff. All the drinks. drinks. All the drinks, wow. Energy drinks, I'll follow it up with some Rum Plus Plus. Maybe mix the Rum Plus Plus with the energy drink. Sure. Get crazy. There we go. I love it. Yep. Any more questions? No more questions so far. We have 10 on the live stream now. Wow. So I was up, experiencing up a little bit of, a, of an extruder clicking, but I think it's because we were still running so fast and we didn't up the temperature to compensate for the speed of the filament going through the nozzle. So if you are <laughs> upping the speed manually from the printer itself, um, always kick up the temperature a little bit just to account for it. I print PLA at 220 sometimes, just because I'm a crazy person. So it's printing at 190 right now. You can definitely kick it up to a higher temp. Um, that's why I was asking um, Joel when he put this in if uh, if it printed at the same temp, just because yep. our temp, our PLA we print at like sort of the lowest temp that you would print PLA yep. at. Um, the range is usually anywhere from I don't know 180, 185 all the way up to 220, even for some different types of PLA. Yep. So big variance in there. Uh, a Buzz Designs wants to know how the dual leveling will happen. 
That's a really good question. I'm just gonna say, wait for the videos that are coming out. I don't wanna share too much about it quite yet, um, but we we are working on some, some videos to show it. Okay. Yeah. Is it is it different than anything we've seen on the market yet? Not quite. It's a variation. Okay. Yeah. So we're not trying to necessarily recreate it. So I think there's it's a combination of hardware and it's a combination of software done really well. Is this okay. Clicking in there. Yes. A little bit. I think a little bit. What's the temp at? It's just 189. Oh, pump it up to 210. Let's see what happens. So it's yeah, stay, live test. stay tuned. Crazy. We'll have like, you know, we'll have some videos at um, showing what we're doing with it. But I'm also, really like, curious now, Braden. Also, the mosaic. Once again, I just, I'm really a big fan of this palette because I started using it on the R2, and it's been phenomenal. So if you guys want to go pick, it's a little. I mean, not pricey per se for what it does, but. So uh, I think it's seven ninety nine for the Palette Plus. Is it? Yeah. Well, the Palette Plus is supposedly giving you the option to have more types of materials together. Yeah, right? it's. I mean, just works. These guys did an awesome job. Um, I've been talking with them. Uh, Brendan is my main yeah. point of contact. Yeah, what, a, what a good dude. Yeah, Mitch. I haven't talked to Mitch. You haven't talked Mitch. So Mitch, yeah, Mitch and uh, is it Brendan? Brendan. Brendan. Yeah. Brennan. They're uh, awesome guys. They. You know, they built this, I've seen them go from just starting out too, and now they have this, this product and they're releasing their new product and uh, it works it works really well. So I'm having a lot of fun printing with, for all of you that don't know, it's a device that sits next to the machine. They have their own software. You basically take a, a model, you can slice it up into four different colors or materials and you basically feed them all into the device. It goes into a single extruder and it prints the four different colors. So it tells Joe, when to switch. Uh, Joe, the three D three D maker new. Yes. He's in Malta. He has the palette and he's he's shown it off. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's kinda cool. So it splices the material, it basically fuses it together, moves on to the next material, splices every time it has to make a switch, and it prints like fluid with a single extruder nozzle. So There's some math going on there. Yes, lots of math. Lots of math. Yeah, but these guys have figured it out and they've done a really, really good job. So uh, kudos to them. Uh, just love seeing I don't know, all this type of innovation stuff just helps fuel the industry, which is definitely positive. So, here's a fun question, and it comes from David Hatton again with another five dollar donation. So that's oh, awesome. thank you, thank you very much. Um, but Braden, uh, he actually wants to know what would be some of your best just entrepreneurial advice. You know, just general entrepreneurial advice. Yeah. So, uh, I would say the number one thing for me always has and will be that. We were very underqualified to start this business uh, initially. You know, we if you check the boxes of is this going to be successful on paper, um, you know, at the early stages, it probably you wouldn't have thought it would have been. But we were extremely passionate about what we were doing, and so don't let sort of the the idea of what you know the people say around you or what the industry thinks, whether you have to have you know genius capabilities or whether you have to have you know specific education for something just dive into it if you have a passion for something and, and figure it out along the way and we've learned a lot along the way and met some amazing people and you know that's just something I would always say if you literally the passion should drive it not the necessarily the skills that you have per se if something if your passion supersedes it then then move forward in it. I, I'm gonna switch back to the blue film we're going back to the blue push down harder than I want yep. okay See if I can do this. I think I remember. Right now. But yeah, I always I got you know the story about just going off that again. The story about how I got into three D printing. Um, I had I was telling Joel about this. I had a company before this that I used three D printers and spent about eight grand getting prototypes made with three D printers. And when I saw my business partner using a three D printer to make this prosthetic leg for his project, um, it kind of all hit me. And I had I always tell the story. I had a mentor at the time. Uh, at San Diego State, which is where I went to college, and he was talking to me about the gold rush, and he said the people that were successful weren't the people seeking gold, they were the people selling the tools to seek gold. And that just really always stuck with me, and when I saw Boy, 3D that's printing... Some, that's some advice right there. Yeah, when I saw 3D printing, and I realized, you know, it's helped me build an idea from scratch, I was like, I can help other people build ideas from scratch. 
and that was just powerful to me and you know we've seen firsthand all our amazing customers making I mean everything under the sun we've seen guys actually start businesses using you know one of you know one of the guys that pops in my head when I talk about this is he made a uh, something called go surf which is a basically a mount for a GoPro that you put in your mouth when you're surfing and he turned that into a small business and we've had guys you know Jacob Pitcher amazing customer that um, runs a department in the school for the blind and he's gotten a lot of our machines and has been using them for um, that school and people that have done prosthetics for kids all over the world there's just a lot of amazing stories I went to Rwanda and was part of the setup of a fab lab in Africa and so really yeah giving them access to it so that's kind of cool yeah really cool I flew over to Rwanda with a fab lab if any of you are familiar and we set up a fab lab in Rwanda that the public has access to so it was really really cool to to be a part of that and just to be a part of this industry and see everything that people are creating you get the blue out I see blue I think yes Blue is out. Yeah, so mixing with the red, and so it, red's a very strong color. Is there uh, any more? Are we are we tying? Are we getting I think close? We're, I think a couple more minutes, maybe a couple more questions. A couple more we'll, questions, we'll, we'll and then we'll tie it, it up. Here's a uh, question from Practical Printing. Okay. Where did Robo's connection to Australia from that triggered you guys going public down there instead of in the U.S.? Ah, okay, yeah. this is good. So what? <laughs> I was, uh, one of the reasons that I was highly critical of Robo on Twitter, I, I think I, I did this, is because, uh, one, they, they went back to Kickstarter when I thought that they had a pile of money because of being acquired by an Australian company. I learned since that it wasn't a pile of money and it, and it was a reverse merger, uh, but Braden can tell you more. Yeah, you know, I'll explain it as, as quick as I can, not to bore anyone, but... We raised investment capital from a um, very well-known investment company in Australia originally. We were working with guys that were from Australia, helping out on some management elements of the business um, about a year ago. And they had the connection with this Australian company. It was led by a very uh, well-known entrepreneur there. And so we got some investment money from them, which helped build out some of the things. But this was all happening after the fact that we did the Kickstarter. And for all of you that you know, were asking about the Kickstarter, we went back, honestly, to me, Kickstarter means the world because it was the platform that helped us go from the dining room table to having our first office, to building these machines and um, getting them out there and, and seeing what all people could create with them. So it was, for us, me and Kobe both decided, my business partner, that we gotta go back to Kickstarter because this, this is the story of Robo. It was built off Kickstarter, there was three of us filming just really homegrown fun video in our house and you know it took off way beyond our expectations and so to go back there and, and you know you know essentially put the r2 price at 500 dollars cheaper than it is now and things like that was sort of like a thank you guys for uh supporting us um you know and just we wanted to keep the story the same when we got the we ended up doing the public because we needed to raise additional funding to uh basically do some of the things that we needed to do with this product to bring it to market. And so we did the public reverse merger, which is essentially there was a, a sort of a, I, I would say a shell company there. It was a mineral company. Um, it had some assets, but we basically did what's called a reverse merger where they essentially acquired us, if you will. But what we ended up doing is just really going, taking that reverse merger and going public on the Australian Stock Exchange. So basically right, so relaunching it to raise money. And so you the the, the new company gets money from this because yes. of coming together, but yeah. then the it's a reverse merger because the Robo name is what yes. takes over. So now it's Robo 3D Inc. on the Australian Stock Exchange. Um, still the exact same company in the U.S. We've we've grown. I mean, nothing's changed on that. We still have the same beliefs, the same ideologies, the same mission, vision. Um, so none of that has changed, and no one. It's not like. People always think someone came in and just like hacked everyone and well, that's what I thought. I, I, yeah, I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was just a huge cash injection. <laughs> yeah, no. And that's why I was highly critical of Robo yeah. because I was like, you have this pile of money. Why do you need? Why do you need a, a seed funding engine yeah. to get money to build your product? But I was off base because I didn't have all the yeah. information. We would have never. I mean, we never would have gone down that road if it was that story. Um, you know, it was. It just allowed things to 
continue to run. It allowed us to complete these products. Um, it allowed us to grow the team. There was additional people we wanted to bring in um, to help expand the team, and um, it just gave us a lot of those resources. And we, you know, to be honest, we've gotten a lot of great support around it. Uh, a lot of inspiring individuals that are a part of the team now, and um, even from the public entity out there, they, you know, there's tons of cool resources that we've been able to utilize. So no, I'm really glad that you're here, and we were able to talk because while I, while I was critical of, of Robo and, and and what had happened, I mean, I was I was basing my my thoughts on current information that I had. Yeah. You, Brian, from Australia, yep. and you, we we had we exchanged emails. And uh, it was it was good to hear that I was wrong. Yeah. Because I don't I don't you know I wouldn't wish that. I, yeah, I want yeah. people to be successful. And so yeah, that, was, that was really good to hear. And the fact that that you and Ryan both took the time to say, hey Joel, no no, here's what's going on. And these were lengthy emails, yeah. right? I still owe you a reply because yeah. I just don't have. It's, I mean, it's hard. You, it's hard when you're on social. Everything's public facing, and you want to explain yourself. And you know, you know, we've been talking to Joel for a long time, and. I wanted to us to be for me to be able to explain to him sort of the scenario that happened without you know I only have a certain amount of characters on Twitter to actually do that I can't I'm not gonna send 20 different messages so uh, I was able to explain to him and I'm glad someone asked that just so I could briefly clarify and hopefully that gave you some context to it but you know we're still in the business we're still running a lot of the operations of the business and we have a great team um, that's continuing to grow and the you know like I said nothing's changed the same vision same mission. So what exists in Australia, physically, for Robo? Uh, some of the executive chairman and board of directors. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, so yeah, they're, they're in Australia. And then, uh, you know, now we're growing some sales channels in Australia, which is cool. We haven't been to any part of Australia in terms of selling, so it'll be cool to see our machines go to that part of the world. What's your, I'm sorry to piggyback on this, but what's your plan for Australia over the next 12, 18 months as far as the sales channel? Are you looking at just to, just to spread the word, get the gospel out? And get yeah, the yeah, just, hands? yeah, I mean, Australia picks up technology mm -hmm. uh, pretty rapidly and um, there's a few other players in Australia and so we're just excited to get out there and get these, these products to people, so. Cool. Yeah. If I can interject really quick here. Yeah. I want to give a couple shout outs. Uh, we've got Micro Swiss LLC with $15. High five, Joel. Brayden, you guys are awesome. Love Robo 3D printers. We got ten dollars. Well, hold on, hold on. Fifteen dollars for Micro Swiss. Yeah. Oh, I love those guys. Micro they, Swiss. Micro Swiss. Thank you so much. I've got those nozzles for the Lowell's bot that'll fit this hexagon hot end. Yes. They actually took. Uh, they they customized a J head for me, and it actually has high five engraved. Oh no way. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. No, I'm a fan of you guys as well. So thank you guys for all that you do. I mean, I like I I love all the people that are doing things to help the industry grow. So whatever that whatever that means, I mean, Joel himself building a YouTube channel, teaching people about 3D printing, all the cool stuff that you can make. There's so many people involved in this thing growing and uh, it's, just, it's cool to see it from, I mean, like I said, I've been in it for five years now, plus, but yeah. actually this business and it's just, it's really inspiring to see everyone. What I'm like, I'm, it's crazy to even be here in his garage. You got two more, okay. It's Ten, crazy. $10 from Jay Cavanaugh. Hey. Love my R1, now my R2 also pre-ordered the Palette Plus. Love you guys, great company. Stakes are on me if you ever visit Texas. Love it. Ooh, I, will take, I will take you up on Is that, that just Braden or is that me too? I like, <laughs> I like steaks. Let's both go. Thank you so much. Yes. And uh, actually, now two more. I just got another one. $5 from Mike Hjorleifsen. Hope I pronounced that right. Sounds Swedish. Mike, Mike what? Hjorleifsen. Mike Hjorleifsen. H -J. Hjorleifsen. Oh, an H J. <laughs> You, uh, I don't know. But that anyways, uh, he did five dollars to your Patreon account earlier. Oh, um, thank wants you. Wants to know serious question with all the testing you have done. How much maintenance could one expect with the R2 if you're constantly printing? It's currently his biggest issue with the Mono Price Ultimate printer that he currently has. Ah, uh, so so Braden, assume someone is using this as a business and it's up for let's say it's printing at least eighteen hours yes. a day. Mm -hmm. Maintenance wise. Uh, maintenance wise. So what? Are, uh, greasing the rods. Or? Greasing the rods. So it has. You have this little. Oh, show that. I, I love the name. It's called tube lube. So you just put a little bit of this on the rods over time, and we actually have, ma like maintenance type videos and information on the site as well. So it'll show you all the things: greasing up, um, making sure the there's actually stuff you can buy to clean the extruder nozzles out, things like that. Some people even put oil 
on the actual filament itself. Yeah, as line yeah, yeah I've heard, I've heard, so, heard the yay and the no. Mix, I, I don't mix, do but uh, don't do there, there are certain things around that. But yeah, I mean, just greasing up is really a main thing. If you, you know, if these ever become loose, really easy to tighten the belts up. Um, but how hot will the extruder go? Uh, you know, we've gotten up the hex up like to 290? 290. Yeah. Okay. Because you could feed uh, like a like a nylon through there, really hot, just yep. to get any PLA remnants out if you yep. need to do that. Yep. And yeah, if the extruder, you know, for what was the name again? Uh, Hjorleifsen. Hjorleifsen. I pronounced that right. Hjorleifsen. Yeah. Wow. And it's Icelandic. Oh. Nice. Love yeah. it. Yeah. So if the uh, the nozzle itself ever you know wears out over time, if you're using a bunch of different types of filament that are corrosive, whatever. There's just a magnetic plate here, and you just pull that off, and it's one screw, and that fill, that hot end will fall out. You can put a new one in, and they're relatively inexpensive the hex hot end. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that in the printer of the bits that can fail, like the hot end itself, yeah. it's not that expensive. Yeah, and that's I think that's the the main part is it just doesn't you know over time to replace certain things like that is very inexpensive. And uh, lastly, from Balancing Options 1322 with a $5 donation. Oh, Balance Options, thank you. Wants Long time know. listener. Awesome, awesome. Uh, wants to know if they live down the road from you, do you guys offer any discount prices for being able to just like pick it up or is there any pickup uh, options? Local, dis to? local discount? Yeah, yeah. As opposed I mean, to shipping. Honestly, in, you know, I don't. Feel free to reach out to me, honestly. I'm not afraid to give out my email on Braden here, so. at robo3d.com. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you're local. You can come pick it up, say hi, see the office. Um, I want to come see the office. We can talk shop. Yeah, you me should. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun office. We have a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, we have all sorts of stuff in there. VR, Sphero. Of, cor of course you do. Yeah, <laughs> we have a bunch of cool stuff in there. We've printed, or we've made a three by three by three foot machine. So uh, every startup has a scooter, right? Come check it out. We had plenty of those little yeah, the Razor scooters. Yeah, okay. another little hoverboards. Oh, those too. We actually three D printed a GoPed, the entire frame. I have a picture of it. Literally the deck, the entire frame, mounted the motor on it. It was pretty cool. And then it broke, but it's pretty, funny. pretty standard. Uh, are we are we clear of the? Yeah, we're caught. Up. I want to because it's a it's getting to be about time. We're gonna maybe catch a burger or something. Yeah. Thank well, you guys. Okay, so everyone on Facebook, on. hey, thanks for joining in. This was fun. If we you wrote, for, uh, we went for two hours. Yeah, it was a long time. If you wrote questions at the bottom, uh, I will answer them as soon as I can for you guys. So thank you so much. Yeah. Sorry I didn't get to get to all of them, but can you say that email one more time? Brayden, yes. Brayden at robo3d.com. That's b r a y d o n at robo3d.com. And I want to give a big thanks to everybody on my YouTube channel yes. that joined us tonight. I really appreciate that. I hope that this was fun. I'm really sorry about the audio in the beginning. I'm still trying to nail it down. I'm actually talking to Puget Systems right now about a streaming system, which will hopefully take care of some of the processor issues I have on this machine, not being able to keep up. Beyond that, uh, I really appreciate the super chats. Again, uh, Josh is a paid assistant and all of this money that I get in will, well, it's gonna be going to Josh because Josh Thanks, is, everyone. <laughs> Josh has got to eat. I do have to eat. Uh, <laughs> Although I could use, lose a few pounds, so I don't need to eat that much. But, you know, it is what it is. You can buy a salad. Yeah. All right. It's been amazing being in the in the 3D printing yeah. A big thanks to Braden oh. for, for coming and for dropping off this machine. Braden, I will give it. I will give it hell. Cool. Uh, and I just want to say, you being my friend doesn't influence how oh, I'm going to yeah, treat no, this machine. Okay. As soon as you leave this house, it's going to be dark days for this machine. Yeah, that's good. I'm running through its course, so no, I'm excited and thank you for having me on. I just appreciate it. I love being here. Um, I love meeting people that are influencing the industry. So cool. get out more. Yes. See what you can, because yeah. this was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, there's going to be some other people I know. in your travels that you can meet up with and do the same. I know I might do this a lot. It's cool. It was fun, dude. Thanks, brother. Thank you. We got to do one of these. There it is. Boom. You ready? Are we, are we, are we high Later, guys. We can, sure, we can throw a high five. Brain's high five and Facebook. Right? <laughs> okay, everybody, up it up. Ready? 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 High five. High five. High fives. Boom. There it is. Thank you, Joe.